which is now part of the English language dictionary and vocabulary, comes from the Tagalog word bundok, meaning mountain. Catch Aral Tarlakenyo every Monday through Friday from 8.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. over Radio Pilipino DCTC 828 and streamed live on Facebook page and YouTube channel of RTV Tarlac Channel 26. I am Jeremiah Gakutan, your English teacher broadcaster. Let's learn English together only here on Aral Tarlakenyo. Hello, Grade 8 learners! I am glad to be with you this afternoon as we have another learning venture in your English subject. Welcome to Aral Tarlakenyo here on RTV Tarlac Channel 26, simulcast over DCTC 828 Radio Filipina Tarlac. We are also streaming live via Facebook page and YouTube channel of RTV Tarlac Channel 26. You can also watch us via Converge TV Channel 100. Broadcasting live here in Ramas Tarlac via remote live broadcast, this is teacher broadcaster Lee and me, Mike B. De La Cruz, your English teacher for today. I do hope that you are feeling great and excited to learn something new this afternoon. If you have questions or clarifications for today's topic, you can reach me at 0909-5817-352. Again, that is 0909-5817-352. 5817352. Before we start with our session, please make sure that you have your self-learning modules, learning activity sheet, paper, and ball pen with you, so it will be easier for you to follow through the activities that we will work on. Also, do not forget to type your name, your section, and the name of your school in the comment box so your subject teacher can track your participation in today's discussion. The focus of our lesson today is about cohesive devices used in informative speeches. Our learning competency for this lesson is the use of appropriate cohesive devices in various types of speech. At the end of this lesson, you are expected to identify cohesive devices used in informative speeches, use cohesive devices appropriately, and classify cohesive devices according to their types. So. Are you ready, my dear grade 8 learners? If yes, then let's begin! In the previous discussion with Mom Rochelle, you learned some details about cohesive devices. Can you still recall what you were able to learn last time? Let us test your attention by working on our first task entitled, Let Us Recall. All you have to do is to write the letter of the best option. Again, write only the letter of your answer. Let us begin. Number one, what is the collective term used for words or phrases that show the relationship between paragraphs or sections of a text or speech? A. Modifiers B. Adverbs C. Adjectives or D. Cohesive devices The answer is letter D. Cohesive devices Number two, which of the following is not a function of cohesive devices? A, to verify the correctness of ideas. B, to show the relationship of sentences. C, to connect or link phrases and clauses. Or D, to unify the ideas presented in sentences. Letter A is the right answer. Verifying the correctness of ideas is not a function of cohesive devices. Number three, which cohesive device best fits this statement? John's family suffered much from the pandemic. Blank, they remain strong and united. A, because, B, furthermore, C, however, or D, lastly.
The correct answer is letter C, however. Number four, which of these transitions indicate the addition of ideas? A, cause. B, furthermore. C, then. Or D, thus. Letter B, furthermore, is the right answer. And for number five, which of these does not sing signal cause or effect and reason and result relationship? A, because, B, consequently, C, similarly, or D, so that. The answer is letter C, similarly. Did you get them all correct? If you did, very good. It only shows that you have a very good understanding of the previous lesson. Keep it up. If not, we will still have more activities to try this afternoon. So prepare your minds to absorb the details of our lesson today and do your best to follow through with the discussion so you can perform well on the task that you will work on. Let us recall some of the information that Mam Rochelle was able to discuss with you last time. You have already learned that cohesive devices are words and phrases that connect ideas. They are also called transition signals or discourse markers. The following are the most commonly used cohesive devices. For comparison, we use the words also, similarly, likewise, and compared with. For contrast, we use in comparison to, in contrast, instead, and on the contrary. For addition, we use and, furthermore, moreover, and to. For effect, we use as a result, consequently, hence, for this reason, thus, because, consequently, accordingly, so, and therefore. For time and order, we use first, second, next, finally, afterwards, later, lastly, now, then, subsequently, and meanwhile. This time, we are giving special focus on cohesive devices used in informative speeches, particularly those expressions that are used in exemplification and in new narration. Last week, you were able to become familiar with persuasive and argumentative types of speech. Now, you will be acquainted with another form of speech, which is informative speech. An informative speech provides information about a specific subject to an audience. It aims to inform the audience and to help them understand and remember the information being presented. This time, let us talk about the cohesive devices which are used for exemplification and enumeration. The cohesive devices which are used for exemplification are to provide examples. Again, the cohesive devices which are used for exemplification are to provide examples include the expressions, for example, for instance, just the same way, to illustrate, to be specific, and such as. For enumeration, the following transitional devices are used to enumerate or to signal a chronological or logical sequence. Again, the following transitional devices are used to enumerate or to signal a chronological or logical sequence. First, second, initially, to start with, first of all, Thirdly, as soon as, in the end, to begin with, at first, for a start, and second. Now, let us try if you will be able to identify whether a paragraph uses cohesive devices for exemplification or enumeration. Write EXE if the paragraph uses cohesive devices for exemplification and ENU if it uses transitions for enumeration. Again, write EXE if the paragraph uses cohesive devices for exemplification and ENU if it uses transitions for enumeration. Number one, 
chemical reactions must be distinguished from physical changes. Physical changes include changes from state, such as ice melting into water and water evaporating to vapor. The answer is EXE or exemplification. The cohesive device used is such as. Number two, the digestive system works this way. First, the teeth grind the food. Then, the food is swallowed. After the food passes through the esophagus and into the stomach, the pancreas churns the food and adds digested juice. Finally, the food passes from the small intestine into the large intestine. The right answer is ENU or enumeration. The expressions used are first, then, after, and finally. Number three, based on research, there were other viruses that shattered lives before. For example, Zika and Dengue viruses. If you answered EXE or exemplification, you are correct. This paragraph used the cohesive device for example. Number four. In conducting research, we have to consider a lot of things. First, locate and define issues or problems. Second, design the research project. Third, collect data. Then, interpret. And lastly, report research findings. If you wrote ENU or enumeration, you got it right. It used the words first, second, third, then, and lastly. And for number five, chemical reactions are integral parts of technology, of culture, and of life itself. For instance, burning fuels, smelting iron, making glass and pottery, brewing beer, and making wine and cheese are among the activities incorporating chemical reactions that have been known and used for thousands of years. The answer is EXE or exemplification. It used the cohesive device for instance. Were you able to get all the correct answers? That is great! Let's have more! This time, let us try if you can already identify the cohesive device that best completes a sentence. In this task, you will try to complete each sentence with the most appropriate cohesive device. Choose your answer from the expressions enclosed in the parentheses. Number one, Louisa had been studying for hours. Blank, she got all the correct answers in the quiz. The choices are, as a result, on the other hand, and above all. Number one, Louisa had been studying for hours. Blank, she got all the correct answers in the quiz. The choices are, as a result, on the other hand, and above all. The answer is, as a result. Number two, Mark is feeling sad. Blank, his team was lost in the dance competition. You may choose from the following. Meanwhile, because, however. The best cohesive device to complete the sentence is because. Number three, my sister has a lot of hobbies. Blank, painting, dancing, singing, and writing. These are the options, in addition, such as, to sum up. The best among the options is, such as. Number four, I visited the library to borrow some books needed in my research. Blank, I went to the canteen to buy some snacks. The choices are, afterwards, although, and as well as. The best expression to complete the sentence is afterwards. 
Number five, my brother was feeling very tired. La, he still went to work early. The choices are, however, in short, and before. The answer is, however. How well did you perform on that activity? All right, I am glad that you were able to complete this task. At this point, we will test your familiarity on cohesive devices, and we will also try if you can correctly classify each according to its category. We will read two informative speeches. As you go over each speech, identify and write down the cohesive devices used and present them in the chart. Classify each according to its type. Again, as you go over each speech, identify and write down the cohesive devices used and present them in the chart. I'll be reading each speech twice. Let us have the first one. The pandemic has brought a lot of changes to learners nowadays. For instance, they would have to cope with the new learning modalities such as modular distance learning and online learning. Just the same way, the teachers have also been obliged to make some adjustments to the unusual teaching and learning process during this difficult time. For example, they have to deliver education to their students by performing some tasks which are not usually done by them before, such as mass printing of modules, conducting online classes, and keeping in touch with their learners without in-person encounters. Furthermore, both teachers and learners have been coping with the stress and anxiety due to the uncertainties and fear brought by the pandemic. To give you more time, allow me to read it again. The pandemic has brought a lot of challenges to learners nowadays. For instance, they would have to cope with the new learning modalities such as modular distance learning and online learning. Just the same way, the teachers have also been obliged to make some adjustments to the unusual teaching and learning process during this difficult time. For example, they have to deliver education to their students by performing some tasks which are not usually done by them before, such as mass printing of modules, conducting online classes, and keeping in touch with their learners without in-person encounters. Furthermore, both teachers and learners have been coping with the stress and anxiety due to the uncertainties and fear brought by the pandemic. Now, let us see if you have spotted all the cohesive devices used in the first speech. The cohesive devices used are, for instance, and, just the same way, for example, such as, and furthermore. Did you recognize them all? If you did, that's amazing. But if not, we still have another one to try. Are you ready? You will have to do the same. List down all the cohesive devices used in the speech. Let's have the next one. During this difficult time, it's important to continue looking after your physical and mental health. This will not only help you in the long term, it will also help you fight COVID-19 if you get it. First of all, eat a healthy and nutritious diet, which helps your immune system to function properly. Second, limit your alcohol consumption and avoid sugary drinks. Third, do not smoke. Smoking can increase your risk of developing a severe disease if you become infected with COVID-19. Fourth, exercise. WHO recommends 30 minutes of physical activity a day for adults and one hour a day for children. Finally, look after your mental health. It's normal to feel stressed, confused, and scared during a crisis. Talking to people you know and trust can help. To give you more time, allow me to read it again. During this difficult time, it is important to continue looking after your physical and mental health. This will not only help you in the long term, it will also help you fight COVID-19 if you get it. First of all, eat a healthy and nutritious diet, which helps your immune system to function properly. Second, limit your alcohol consumption and avoid sugary drinks. Third, do not smoke. 
Smoking can increase your risk of developing a severe disease if you become infected with COVID-19. Fourth, exercise. WHO recommends 30 minutes of physical activity a day for adults and one hour a day for children. Finally, look after your mental health. It's normal to feel stressed, confused, and scared during a crisis. Talking to people you know and trust can help. Let us find out if you have listed all the cohesive devices. Here they are. And also, first of all, second, third, fourth, and finally. How well did you perform? Have you identified them all? I hope you did. This time, try to classify each according to its type. Again, try to classify each according to its type. Accomplish this chart. I'll give you one minute to do this activity. Now reveal the answers. The cohesive devices and, also, and furthermore are used in addition. For instance, such as, just the same way, and for example, fall under the category of exemplification. The expressions first of all, second, third, fourth, and finally are used in enumeration. I hope that you were able to classify them all correctly. So, did you have a good time working on our activities this afternoon? If yes, excellent! You learned in this afternoon's discussion that an informative speech informs an audience about a specific subject. Its goal is to inform the audience and assist them in understanding and remembering the information presented. This time, you are tasked with writing an informative speech about how you can succeed at distance learning during the pandemic. Try to share some tips that you have found useful in dealing with the new learning modalities that are available nowadays. Use at least five cohesive devices. Again, use at least five cohesive devices. The following are the criteria for evaluating your work. For content, three points. For correct usage of cohesive device, four points. For proper spelling, grammar, capitalization, and punctuation marks, three points, with a total of 10 points. Excellent work, grade 8 students! You did a brilliant job today. Indeed, we can learn English while having fun with Ara Tarlacaño here on RTV Turlock Channel 26, simulcast over DZTC 828, Radio Filipino Turlock. This is Mam Lee and me, Micah V. De La Cruz, your teacher broadcaster for English Aid today. I hope you enjoy your learning experience. Have a wonderful day! Upang matugunan ang mga kinakaharap na pagsubok ng mga guro at mag-aaral sa gitna ng kasalukuyang pandemya, nagsanib tulong sina Congressman Charlie Cojuanco ng unang distrito ng Tarlac 
DepEd Region 3 Regional Director, Dr. May B. Eklar, at Talak Schools Division Superintendent, Dr. Ronaldo Poson, para sa isang napapanahong proyekto na tinaguri ang Project Shine Aral Tarlakenyo. Ang mga mag-aaral ng Grade 4 at Grade 5, ganun din ang Grades 8 and 9 sa buong probinsya ng Talak, kasalukuyang sumasa ilalim sa radio-based instruction. Katuwang ang himpilang DZTZ 828 kHz AM at RTV Talak, Channel 26. Ang Tarlac po nangunguna po ngayon pagdating po sa radio-based instruction. Marami pong humahanga sa atin. I'm very happy this station, itong DCTC, could reach the whole of Region 3. Hindi natin alam. We are contributing. We are creating a very big dent in the history of Philippine education. And I am proud. I am here in Tarlac. This is the noble cause of education in which you and I, without you knowing it, we are bound to do. The project natin, uh, Project Shine, is a natural consequence dahil sa nangyari sa buong mundo. Let's continue to work together. I think it's very Filipino to practice uh, bayanihan in anything or most of the things that we do. And this is a manifestation of that. You know? We have private sector, we have DepEd, we have local government, all working together. And I hope the parents of some of these children, especially the parents that did not graduate from school or hindi nakapag-aral nung sila ay bata, eh sana naman gamitin na nila itong opportunity na mag-schooling na rin sila kasama ng mga bat anak nila para mag-banding pati ang mga magulang sa mga bata. I look at this as doing God's work. Diba? So if you do God's work, it feels right. It's righteous. It's for good, not for evil. Good morning and uh, happy uh, learning uh, grade 4. Uh, welcome to Adal Tarlac Henyo here on RTV Tarlac Channel 26. Simulcast over DZDZ828, Radio Pilipino Tarlac. I am Teacher Mercy Pacheco Bognot. This is Alistair Aidatu. I am Marie Josephine B. Andrade. I am Teacher Princess Marie M. Duenas. And I will be your teacher broadcaster for today. Alam niyo ba na ang gitnang Luzon ay tinaguri ang banga ng bigas ng bayan at kamalig ng palay ng Pilipinas dahil dito nagbumula ang malaking produksyon ng bigas sa ating bansa. Ito ay binubuo ng mga lalawigan ng Aurora, Pataan, Pampanga, Nueva Ecija, Zambales at Tarlac. Pagalihin natin manood ng Araw Tarlac Henyo, lunes hanggang biyernes, alas 8.30 ng umaga hanggang alas 5.30 ng hapon. Ako si Binibining Pia Izrin Kapiral, ang inyong teacher broadcaster sa Araling Panlipunan dito sa Project Shine Araw Tarlac Henyo. Lagi nating tandaan ang pag-aaral ng Araling Panlipunan ay tungo sa daan ng pagiging makajos. Makakalikasan, makatao at makabansa. sumusubaybay sa ating Project Shine Aral Tarlac Henyo ng Schools Divisions of Tarlac Province. Hatid sa inyo ng RTV Tarlac Channel 26 at sa bayan tayong napapakinggan sa DZTC 828 AM Radio Pilipino Tarlac. Napapanood din tayo sa Facebook live stream at Converge uh, Cable Channel 100. Naririto na naman tayo nagsisikap 
nagpupunyagi na maging makajos, makatao, makakalikasan at makabansa. Kumusta mga gilong kong tagapakinig? Ang aking pagbati at paghanga na sa kabila ng hamon ng pandemyang ating kinakaharap, kayo ay lubos na nagbibigay halaga sa ating edukasyon. Ako ang inyong guro sa Araling Panlipunan Grade 8, Ginang Jessel G. Torres. Sasamahan at gagabayan kayo sa most essential learning competency na nasusuri ang dahilan, pangyayari, at epekto ng unang yugto ng kolonyalismo. Ngunit bago tayo magsimula, siguraduhin na kayo ay nasa komportableng lugar habang nakasubaybay sa aral tanlakhe nyo. Mas mainam din okay, na kayo ay uh, nakakain o nakapagmerienda na upang maging alerto ang inyong pag-iisip at maayos na maunawaan ang talakayan ngayong araw na ito. Ihanda ang CP ng inyong module, papel at ballpen na gagamitin sa ating pag-aaral at iwasan ang paggawa ng ibang bagay at ituon ang sarili sa, sa paksang tatalakayin natin. Kaya't halina't simulan na nating makinig at matuto. Balikan muna natin ang paksang tinalakay noong nakaraang linggo. Subukan ninyong sagutin ang limang tanong na aking ibibigay ukol sa pag-usbong ng makabagong daigdig, transformasyon, tungkol sa pagbuo ng pandaigdigang kamalayan. Para sa ating balik-aral, ihanda ang inyong papel at ballpen at isulat sa sagutang papel ang sagot sa uh, limang katanungang ito. Handa na ba kayo? Kung ganun, magsisimula na tayo sa ating balik-aral. Para sa unang tanong, ito ay, ito ay isang terminong iniuugnay sa mga mamamayan ng mga bayan sa medieval France na binubuo ng mga artisans at mga ngalakal. Kung ang sagot ay Burgosy, tama ang iyong kasagutan. Ikalawang tanong, Anong doktrina na kasentro ang teorya ng merkantilismo na ang tagumpay ng isang bansa ay masusukat sa dami ng mahalagang metal sa loob ng hangganan nito? Ang sagot ay doktrinang bullionism. Ikatlong tanong. Ito ay nangangahulugang muling pagsilang o rebirth. Ito ay nangangahulugang muling pagsilang o rebirth. Ang sagot ay Renaissance. Ikaapat na tanong. Ito ang tawag sa mga iskolar na nanguna sa pag-aaral sa klasikal na sibilisasyon ng Greece at Rome. Ikaapat na tanong, ito ang tawag sa mga iskolar na nanguna sa pag-aaral sa klasikal na sibilisasyon ng Greece at Rome. Ang sagot ay, humanist o humanista. At para sa ikalibang tanong, ano ang katawagan sa mga kaganapan na yumanig sa, sa kakristyanuhan o kay mula ikalabing uh, apat o kay hanggang ikalabing pito o kay dantaon na humantong sa pagkakahati ng simbahang kristyano? Ang sagot ay reformasyon. Okay. Ilan? Okay, ang nakuha mong tamang sagot. Tama ba? Okay, ang mga uh, nakuha mo Itama ba yung mga inaisagot mo? Batid ko okay, na marami kang naisagot. Kung hindi man, ay may pagkakataon ka pa okay, na makabawi sa susunod nating paksa o sa susunod nating gawain. Sa tinalakay natin okay, sa nakaraang aralin, ang tungkol sa pag-usbong ng makabagong daigdig, transformasyon, tungo sa pagbuo ng pandaigdigang kamalayan. So sa paksang ito ay nagkaroon tayo ng mala, uh, malinaw at malawak na kaalaman okay, tungkol sa konsepto okay, ng kontribusyon ng bourgeoisie, merkantilismo, national monarchy, renaissance, simbahang katoliko, at reformasyon sa daigdig. 
Nung sa nakaraang tala ka yan, itinalakay ang tungkol sa pag-usbong ng makabagong daigdig, ngayon ay handa na ba kayo sa ating bagong aralin? Game na ba kayong mag-aral at matuto dito sa aral tarlakhe nyo? At ating naman tatalakayin. Okay, ngayong araw na ito ay tungkol sa paglawak ng kapangyarihan ay ng Europe. Inaasahan natin okay sa uh, pagtatapos ng leksyong ito ay kan- kaya na ninyong maisa-isa at masuri okay ang mga dahilan, ang pangyayari at epekto ng unang yugto ng kolonisasyon. Okay, handa na ba kayo? Pero bago nating simulan ang ating talakayan ay magkuroon muna tayo ng kalinawan ukol. Okay, sa dalawang salita. Itong dalawang salita na ito ay ang kolonyalismo at imperialismo okay, na nakapaloob sa ating paksa. Ano nga ba ang kahulugan okay, ng kolonyalismo? At ano nga ba ang kahulugan ng salitang imperialismo? Pag-uusapan natin ngayon ang kahulugan ng salitang kolonyalismo at imperialismo dito pa rin sa aral ng laki nyo. Ang kolonyalismo ay ang tuwirang pananakop ng isang bayan sa iba pang bayan upang mapagsamantalahan ang yaman nito o makuha rito okay, ang iba pang pangangailangan ng mga kolonya. Uh, madalas itong inahi, inahi, uh, naihahalin tulad sa imperialismo. Ngunit ang dalawa na ito ay may pagkakaiba. Okay? Merong nagsisilbing uh, o merong maaaring Okay, magsilbing basihang pangangalakal o pangmilitar ang kolonyalismo. May dumako naman tayo sa salitang imperialismo. Ang imperialismo ay tumutukoy sa patakaran o paraan ng pamamahala ng isang malaki o makapangyarihang bansa. Okay, ang naghahangad okay, upang palawakin ang kanyang kapangyarihan sa mamamagitan ng pananakop o pagkontrol sa pangkabuhayan at pampolitikang kaayusan ng isa o, o ng isa o iba pang mga bansa. Sana ay naging malinaw ang kahulugan ng dalawang salita ito na ito. Okay, dahil uh, ang dalawang salita na ito ay palaging mababanggit okay, sa ating talakayan ngayon o sa susunod pa nating mga episode. Ang nagsimula, okay, ang pagsisimula o nagsimula ang paglakas ng Europe ay nagpatuloy hanggang sa makabagong panahon. Okay, higit na lumawak ang kapangyarihan nito dahil sa eksplorasyon okay, at kolonisasyon ng bagong daigdig at pagsigla ng kalakalan. Bunga ng revolusyong industrial at komersyal. So higit na dumami ang salapi sa sirkulasyon at lumaki ang kapital okay at naging karaniwan okay ang bigla ang pagyaman ng mga namumuhunan. Ang bagong pananaw sa kalakalan at produksyon ang nabigidaan sa pag-unlad ng kapitalismo. Okay sa pagdami ng pera ng tao, okay umunlad ang bagong sistema. Okay ito ang uh, tinatawag nating kapitalismo. Ang tatalakayin natin ay tungkol sa paglawak ng kapangyarihan ng Europe. So, alam niyo ba kung paano nakatulong ang paglawak ng kapangyarihan ng Europe sa transformasyon ng daigdig tungo sa pagbuo ng pandaigdigang kamalayan? At ano-ano kaya ang mga dahilan, pangyayari at epekto ng unang yugto ng kolonisasyon? ating iisa-isahin at ipapaliwanag ko iyan sa, ng mas maigi dito sa ating aral tarlakhe nyo. Para sa ating unang gawain, ang tanong, sasama ka ba? So ihanda ang kwaderno at ballpen at isulat ang pangalan, antas, pangkat at petsa ngayong araw na ito. Magsisimula na tayo. Okay, kailangan nyong suriin ang kasunod na sitwasyon. Okay, pagkatapos, isulat ninyo ang inyong mga kasagutan sa inyong kwaderno. So, panahon 1430, sitwasyon, makulimlim na araw, nasa isang daungan ka okay, ng Europe at nagmamasid sa karagatang Atlantiko. Hindi mo alam kung anong meron sa kabilang dako ng karagatan. Ikaw ay naatasan na sumama sa isang paglalayag. Maraming kwentong nakakatakot ang iyong narinig hinggil sa halimaw ng karagatan at mga barkong lumubog. 
mayroon din namang mga barkong hindi na may sa kanilang banda, may kayamanang naghihintay para sa mga individual na nakibahagi sa paglalayag at pagtuklas ng bagong lupain. Itong mga katanungan natin sa sitwasyon na yan. Okay. At uh, uh, mayroon pa pala. Okay. Mayroon pa pala tayong uh, kasunod okay, na uh, karugtong okay, ng ating kwento. So ang malalaking alon ay maaaring sumira okay, at uh, magpalubog sa barko. Ikalawa, okay, may mga barko na maaaring maglaman ng ginto, mamahaling hiyas, at mahalagang bagay na nagmula sa kabilang bahagi ng karagatan. Ito, tungkol sa sitwasyon. Ano ang pabuyang posible mong matanggap kung sasama ka sa paglalayag? Okay? So ang sagot ay, maaari kang makatanggap ng pabuya gaya ng ginto, mamahaling hiyas, at mahalagang bagay. Ikalawang tanong, ano-anong panganib ang naghihintay sa iyo kung sakaling sumama ka sa paglalayag? Ang sagot ay, may mga malalaking alon na maaaring sumira at magpalubog sa barko. At may mga barko din na hindi na nakakabalik. Para sa ating ikalawang gawain, Okay, ito ay tatawagin natin, surihin mo. Ihanda ang iyong kaderno at ballpen at isulat ang pangalan, antas, okay, at petsa ngayong araw na ito. Okay, magsisimula na tayo. Isulat ang, nas, ang naiisip mong maitutulong sa iyo ng bawat isa. Isulat mo kung ano yung naitutulong okay, sa iyo ng bawat isa na babanggitin natin. Isulat mo yan sa kaderno mo ang mga sagot. Okay, handa na ba kayo? Mukhang handa na. Sa unang larawan natin, okay, makikita ang aklat o libro. Sa ikalawang larawan, makikita mo ang iba't ibang uri ng gamot. Sa ikatlong larawan ay makikita mo okay, ang mga train o ang train. At sa ikaapat na larawan, makikita mo ang libro na may nakasulat okay, na lo o batas. Para sa unang larawan, nakikita ang aklat o libro. At uh, para sa unang larawan, ang aklat o libro ay naglalaman. Okay, nang hindi mapapantayang karunungan ng isa o maraming tao sa iba't ibang larangan. So ang aklat ay nakakatulong yan at naglalaman yan ng mga karunungan. Okay, para sa ikalawang larawan, okay, ang mga gamot o medisina ay nakakatulong upang lunasan naman okay, ang mga sakit, okay, kaalaman upang maiwasan ang mga sakit, ang taglalaman ng pinagmulan o sanhi ng sakit. Okay, para sa ikatlong larawan, ang train o transportasyon uh, okay, isang paraan sa paghahatid mula sa isang lugar o okay, papunta sa isang lugar. At ang ikaapat na larawan naman ay ang batas. Okay, napakahalaga ng batas okay, sa isang lipunan dahil ito ang gagabay sa atin sa, patuloy ng, uh, sa pagtukoy ng tama at mali sa mga bagay na maaari nating gawin okay, na makakapagpaganda at makakapagpaunlad sa ating lipuran. Natukoy mo na ang mga konsepto tungkol sa paglawak ng kapangyarihan ng Europe. Handa na ba okay, kayo na malaman ang pangyayaring nagbigay daan dito? Okay. Sa unang yugto ng imperialismong kanluranin, nagsimula ito okay, noong ikalibang uh, labing limang siglo. Ito ang dakilang panahon ng eksplorasyon o paghahanap ng mga lugar na hindi pa nanarating ng mga Europeo. Ang eksplorasyon ay nagbigay daan sa kolonisasyon o ang pagsakop ng isang mga pangyarihang bansa sa isang mahinang bansa. May tatlong bagay na may tuturing na motibo para sa kolonyalismo na dulot ng eksplorasyon, ang una ay ang paghahanap ng mga kayamanan. Ikalawa ay pagpapalaganap ng krisyanismo. At ikatlo, okay, paghahangad ng katanyagan at karangalan. So ulitin natin, ito yung mga motibo okay, sa eksplorasyon. Bakit naglakbay ang mga Europeo? Una ay paghahanap ng kayamanan. Pangalawa, pagpapalaganap ng krisyanismo. Ikatlo ay paghahangad ng katanyagan at karangalan. 
So nung ika-15 hanggang ika-17 uh, siglo ng unang yugto ng imperialismong kaluranin, hindi na sana maisasakatuparan ang paglalakbay ng mga Europeo o kaysa malawak na karagatan nung ika-15 siglo kung hindi dahil o kaysa mga salik na ito. Okay, ito yung nagbigay daan okay, para makapaglakbay sila. Una ay pagiging mausisa, okay, dulot ng Renaissance. At ikalawa ay ang pagtuklas at pagpapaunlad okay, sa mga instrumentong pangnabigasyon at sasakyang pandagat. Kung hindi dahil okay, sa mga salik na ito, hindi sana maitutuloy okay, ang eksplorasyon. So nakakabanghang isipin na sa panahong ito ay natutunan nilang hindi sumuko sa kanilang paglalakbay o kahit na maraming pagsubok ang kinang, uh, kanilang ikiniharap. Mga giliw kong mag-aaral, kayo ay naka, nakaranas na ba kayo o kayo ng kabiguan o pagkalugmok? Kung ang sagot ninyo ay oo, huwag mag-alala okay, o malungkot dahil lahat ng tao ay dumadaan sa kabiguan o pagkalugmok. Okay, laging tatandaan, kung uh, nakakaramdam ka na ng pagkapagod at gusto mo ng sumuko, lagi mong iisipin na pwede kang magpahinga sandali. Okay, at uh, pagkatapos ay uh, pwede ka nang muli o pwede mo nang uli ipagpatuloy ang laban. Okay, sang ayon ba kayo doon? Mabuti kung ganoon. Okay, thumbs up. Okay, para sa patuloy na paglaban at hindi pagsuko okay ng bawat isa. Gayon pa man, ang uh, nasabing eksplorasyon ay nagkaroon ng matinding epekto na nag, sa naging takbo ng kasaysayan ng daigdig. Okay, sa kabuuan, ang panahon ng eksplorasyon ay naging daan tungo sa paglawak ng Europeo. Okay, uh, panghuli sa ating talakayan okay, ngayong araw ay ang motibo at salik sa eksplorasyon. Okay, ang Asia ay isa ng kaakit-akit na lugar. Okay, para sa mga Europeo, bagamat ang kanilang kaalaman tungkol sa Asia ay napaka-limitado. Okay, dahil hango lamang ang kanilang kaalaman sa mga tala ng dalawang mandalakbay tulad ni na Marco Polo at Ibatuta. Okay, napukaw kasi ang kanilang paghahangad na marating ang paglalarawan, okay, uh, paglalarawan sa mga aklat na sinulat nila okay, ng mga mayayamang lugar sa Asia. Mahalaga ang aklat ng The Travels of Marco Polo. Okay, sapagkat ipinabatid nito okay, sa mga Europeo na mararating okay, ang China. Samantala, itinala naman ng Muslim na manlalakbay ni Ibatuta okay, ang kanyang paglalakbay sa Asia at Africa. Mas lalong nakadagdag yun okay, sa tala ni Marco Polo at Ibatuta. Okay, sa hangarin ng mga Europeo na maghanap ng bagong ruta patungo sa kayamanan ng Asia. Lalo pa at ang uh, rutang dinaraanan sa kanlurang Asia sa panahong ito ay isinara at kontrolado ng mga Muslim noong mga panahon na yan. At maliban doon ay sumang-ayon din kasi ang panahon sa, sa mga manlalakbay at mga ngalakal na ito. Natuklasan okay, ang kompas at astrolabe ng mga panahon na yan. Kapwa malaking tulong okay, ang dalawang instrumentong ito sa mga manlalayag. Dahil ang kompas ang nagbibigay ng tamang direksyon okay, sa mga naglalakbay. Samantala, ang astrolabe naman ay gamit upang sukatin ang taas ng mga bituin. Okay. Ang dalawang bansang Europe ang uh, nagpasimula ng paglalayag at pagtuklas ng mga bagong lupain. Ang Portugal at Spain ang nanguna okay, sa paglalayag. Ito dalawang bansa na ito. Ngunit mas nauna okay, ang bansang Portugal sa mga bansang Europeo okay, dahil kay Prinsipe Henry the Navigator na naging inspirasyon ng mga manlalayag sa kanyang panahon. Siya ang nag-anyaya okay, na, uh, sa mga dalubhasang mandaragat na magturo ng tamang paraan sa paglalayag sa mga tao. Okay, sukdulan ang kanyang pangarap okay, ang uh, makatuklas ng bagong lupain para sa karangalan ng Diyos at karangalan ng kanilang bansa na Portugal. Okay, limitado okay, lamang sa Spain at Portugal ang paglalayag ng mga Europeo. 
Okay, ito ang panahon kung saan na itatag ang unang pinakamalaking imperyo okay, ng mga Europeo. Ang mga imperyo ito ay nagsimula sa mga dakilang pagtuklas ng mga lupain. Sa panig ng Espanyol, nagsimula ito okay, noong 1469 nang uh, makapagpakasal sa Reina Isabela kay Ferdinand ng Aragon. Okay, sila ang sumuporta okay, sa pagpapanatili ng kapangyarihan ng mga dugong bughaw sa Castile. Okay, noong ikalabing pitong siglo naman ay naitatag okay, ng uh, mga bagong imperyo sa Hilaga. Okay, sa Hilagang Europe, Great Britain, okay, France at Netherlands. Kasi itong mga bansa na ito, okay, katulad ng France ay Netherlands, ay sumunod na rin okay, sa paggalugad ng bagong lupain pagkatapos ng Portugal at Spain. Ang mga ito ay nagbigay lakas okay, sa mga Europeo upang uh, palakihin ang pakikipagkalakalan at pagpapalaganap ng mga produktong galing sa silangan. Okay, so diyan nagtatapos. Okay, ang ating talakayan ngayong araw na ito. Okay, sana ay naunawaan ninyo ang unang wahagi ng ating talakayan. Ngayon, para sa ating huling gawain, okay, isulat ang tamang sagot kung wasto ang ipinapahayag ng ideya o pangungusap. Kung ito naman ay mali, ay isulat ang salitang nagpamali sa pangungusap. Okay, uulitin ko. Okay, isulat din ang tama kung wasto ang ipinapahayag at uh, isulat naman okay ang mali okay kung ang pinapahayag ay mali at isulat ninyo ang salitang nagpamali sa pangungusap kung ito ay mali. Okay. Next, number one, ang imperialismo ay pangihimasok pag-iimpluwensya o pagkontrol ng isang makapangyarihang bansa sa isang mahinang bansa. Ang imperialismo ay pangihimasok, pag-iimpluwensya o pagkontrol ng isang makapangyarihang bansa sa isang manginang bansa. Kung ang sagot ninyo ay tama, kayo ay tama. Number two, tatlong bagay ang itinuturing na motibo para sa kolonyalismong dulot ng eksplorasyon. Okay, number one, paghahanap ng kayamanan. Ikalawa, pagpapalaganap ng kristyanismo. Ikatlo ay pag, uh, paghangad ng katanyagan at karangalan. Ikalaw, uh, ikalawang tanong, tatlong bagay ang itinuturing na motibo okay, para sa kolonyalismo. Dulot ng eksplorasyon, paghahanap ng kayamanan, pagpapalaganap ng kristyanismo at paghahangad ng katanyagan. Kung ang sagot ninyo ay tama, okay, kayo ay mahusay. Number three, ang mga malalakbay na sina Marco Polo at Ib Saud okay, ang nagbigay ng kaalaman at pumukaw okay, ng kanilang paghahangad na marating okay, ito dahil sa uh, mga paglalarawan dito bilang mayayamang lugar. Okay, ang paglalakbay daw okay, ni Marco Polo at Ib Saud ang nagbigay okay, ng kaalaman at pumukaw sa kanilang paghahangad na marating ang Asia. Kung ang sagot ninyo ay mali, kayo ay magaling. Okay, dahil ang dalawang mga lalakbay na ito ay si Marco Polo at Id Batuta. Okay, hindi siya Ib Saud. Okay, number four. Okay, mahalaga ang aklat na The Travels of Marco Polo sapagkat pinabatid nito okay, sa mga Europeo ang yaman at kaunlaran taglay ng China. Okay, kung ang sagot ninyo ay tama, okay, napakahusay. Number five, sumang-ayon ang panahon sa mga manlalakbay at mga ngalakal nang matuklasan ang kompas at astrolabe. Okay, sumang-ayon ang panahon ng mga, sa mga manlalakbay at mga ngalakal okay, na matuklasan ng astrolabe at kompas. Kung ang sagot ninyo ay tama, very good. Okay, kung nakuha ninyo lahat ng tamang sagot ay binabati ko kayo. So, isang bahagi Okay, ng ating leksyon, ng ating natapos talakayin upang magkaroon ng ideya sa susunod na talakayan. Maaari ninyong basahin ang pahina 303 hanggang 305 para mas maging handa kayo sa susunod nating leksyon. Okay, kaya naman sana ay huwag ninyong kalimutan okay, ang mahalagang aral na iyong natutunan sa ating leksyon at sikapin ninyo itong ibahagi okay, sa iba. Inaasahan ko okay, na kayo ay natuto sa ating talakayan ngayong araw na ito. Okay, muli ako, 
Okay, ang inyong guro sa Araling Panlipunan, Grade 8, Ginang Jessel G. Torres, na nagsasabing ang pag-aaral ng Araling Panlipunan ay daan sa pagiging makajos, makatao, makakalikasan at makabansa. Hanggang sa muli, okay, paalam, stay safe! Saan mang bahagi ng Pilipinas? Sa saan mang bahagi ng mundo? Ano mang uri ng pamumuhay? Ito ang Kabahagi Mo Radio Pilipino. Napapakinggan on air, on air. and online. online sa buong mundo sa pamamagitan ng www.radiopilipino.com Radiopilipino.com Impormasyong may kalidad at serbisyong may halaga. Kasama, Katuwa, Kapino, Kabahagi Mo, Kabahagi Radio Filipino Radio Filipino Aprobado na sa Committee on Youth and Sports Development ang House Bill 7132 o isang act na nagbibigay ng otoridad sa Philippine Sports Commission na kumuha ng mga ari-arian sa ibang paraan. Alinsunod sa layunin ng Section 7 of the Republic Act No. 11214 o mas kilala sa tawag na Philippine Sports Training Center Act. Ang nasabing House Bill ay inihain ni Congresswoman Aniela Tolentino, Congressman Jaime D. Cuanco, Congressman Christian A. Yap, at Congressman Cap Noel Bong Rivera. Layunin ng batas na maitayo ang Philippine Sports Training Center sa New Clark City kasama ang iba pang world-class sports facilities doon. Pinasalamatan naman ni Congressman Yap ang Committee on Youth and Sports Development. Para sa RTV Tarlac Channel 26, ako si Jam Torrio, nagbabalita. Ginawarad kamakailan ng limang artist sa 7 Tarlac National Art Competition Kanlahi Festival 2023 sa Art Gallery D1 ng Tarlac, Tarlac City. Panalo sa sculpture category si Mr. Patrick Miranda, representational category si Mr. Roberto Sapungan, Non-representational category si Mr. Jonathan Carpio, Governor's Choice naman si Mr. Eri Samson Puro Jr. at Vice Governor's Choice naman si Mr. Fernando Ramos Jr. Tampok sa naturang art gallery ang iba't ibang obra maestra mula sa iba't ibang mga artist. Para sa RTV Tarlac Channel 26, ako si Jonathan Ibay, nagbabalita. Isinagawa kamakailan ng Center for Transboundary Animal Diseases ang isang training tungkol sa syndromic surveillance of notifiable disease in pigs sa Sangguniang Panglungsod Conference Hall, Tarlac City. Pinangunahan ni na Dr. Virginia Venturina, Central Luzon State University doctors Dr. Ronalie Rafael, Dr. Jemerlin Garcia, Dr. Errol J. Balgan, Dr. Roderick Salvador, Provincial Veterinarian Dr. Lorna Bacolanta, College of Veterinary Medicine at Livestock International ang nasabing training. Dumalo sa nasabing training ang mga veterinarians, agriculturists, swine farm producers at farmers ng Tarlac upang bigyan kaalaman ang mga Tarlacenyo tungkol sa mga sakit sa baboy tulad ng African Swine Fever, Classical Swine Fever, Japanese Encephalitis, at reporting system para sa notifiable diseases. Ang Center for Transboundary Animal Diseases ay isang joint project ng Department of Agriculture sa pamamagitan ng Bureau of Animal Industry at Central Luzon State University. Nagpaabot naman ng mensahe si Tarlac City Mayor Christy Angeles sa pamamagitan ni Chief of Staff Lorena V. Ledesma kung saan pinasalamatan nito ang Center for Transboundary Animal Diseases at binigyang importansya ang training para sa mga veterinarians, agriculturists, swine farm producers at farmers ng Tarlac City. Para sa RTV Tarlac Channel 26, ako si Christian Manlapaz, nagbabalita. How are you today? Hello everyone! 
and learners of Tarla. Good morning, Mas Talino Grade 4 learners! Welcome to Aral Tarla Kenyo here on RTV Tarla Channel 26. Simulcast over DCPC Radio Filipino Tarla. I'm Sir Glenn, your teacher broadcaster. Broadcasting live here at Paniki Tarla. Remotely here in Concepcion, Tarla. Live here at Barangay Pedro El Quines, Mayantok, Tarla. Broadcasting live from Ramos National High School. Your anchor teacher today for Grade 9 Mathematics. Your partner in education this time of pandemic. Your teacher broadcaster from Binbinaka, Mayantok, Tarla. How are you, my dear learners? I hope you are doing great. Are you ready to learn something new? All right, so prepare yourselves to another lesson full of knowledge, skills, and practical experience. Join me today as we proceed and take a bite to the new lesson in TLE Grade 8, Handicraft Making Embroidery specifically on the different embroidery stitches. Remember, my dear students, don't forget to bring with you your compendium of notes on handicraft, ball pen, and paper. At the end of our discussion, if you have questions or clarifications on our lesson, feel free to text me at 0965-665-655. Again, that's 0965-665-6551. Let's start with a short review on our previous lesson and find out if you can still recall what you have learned yesterday. Can you still recall? What is embroidery all about? Very good. Embroidery is the ornamentation of textiles and other materials with needlework for personal use and decoration, not only at home, but for offices as well. How about transfer methods of embroidery designs? Do you still remember? Yes, you are correct. The various methods to transfer a design onto the material are direct drawing method, tracing method, Brick and pounce method and tracing paper method. Before we proceed to our lesson for today, let's play a game. Do you use the scrambled letter? That's great! Here are the mechanics of the game. Everyone is encouraged to join the game. Everyone is allowed to guess the word or words based on the visual clues representing the syllables or words. Arrange the scrambled letters to decode the word or words based on the presented pictures and letters. You may type your answer on the chat box or comment your answer on the comment section for the FB Live viewers. A sample item will be provided. This is a sample item. Can you guess what this is? Well, the category for this sample is musical instruments. You may type your answer on the chat box. Let's reveal the answer. The answer is guitar. Did you get right? That's how it works. Well then, let's start the game. The categories for this game are the different basic embroidery stitches. Are you ready? Here is the first item. What do you think it is? Type your answer on the chat box. The correct answer is very good. It is running stitch. 
How about this item? Wow, someone in the chat box already got the answer. The right term for this item is backstitch. Well done. How about our third item? What word or words can you decode? Bingo! The correct answer is chain stitch. Can you decode the hidden word or words in this item? Type your answer on the chat box. There you have it. The correct answer is cross stitch. We are down to our last item. Can you guess what the item is? Again, type your answer on the chat box. Very good, grade 8 learners. Almost all of you got the correct answer. The correct answer is French knot. Give yourselves a clap for a job well done. Based on the revealed word or words and pictures on the game, our topic for today is about different basic embroidery stitches. At the end of the lesson, you will be able to identify different basic stitches in handicraft. Running stitch, back stitch, chain stitch, cross stitch, and French knot. Another one, you may able to apply the step-by-step -step process of different stitches. I encourage everyone to listen attentively. There are various embroidery stitches which you can choose from when you do embroidery work. For you to gain more skill on this line, we will explore the different embroidery stitches, which will be your basis to produce embroidery project. Let us start with running stitch. It is a simple embroidery stitch that is good for making dash outlines. It is also considered being the easiest stitch outline. Here are the steps on how to do the running stitch. Step one, at the back of the fabric, bring the needle through point A. Step two, bring your needle down in a distance from where you started to make it through point B. Step three, continue steps one and two, working right to left to make several running stitches. Now, I will demonstrate to you on how to do the running stitch.
Now you know how to do the running stitch. Next is the back stitch. This stitch is ideal for outline. It is great for making solid line. This stitch also forms the baseline for other embroidery stitches. Here are the steps to follow. Step 1. Bring the thread through A and take it in through point B. This creates one stitch. Step 2. Bring the thread through C and take it in through B. This way, we are creating a stitch by taking the thread backward. Step 3. Bring the thread through D and take it through C. Continue this pattern to finish the design. Lastly, step 4. A finished line of back stitch will look like this. Here is a video on how to do it. It gives a chain like appearance or like petals line up one after another. Here are the steps on how to do the chain stitch. Step 1 Bring the thread out through A. Put the needle back in A and bring it out through point B. But do not pull the needle out completely. Step 2 Now take the thread around the needle from left to right to form a loop. Step 3 Pull out the needle to not tighten the loop and you will get the first part of the chain. Step 4, now put the needle in through B inside the loop and bring it out on C outside the loop. Step 5, continue the action by taking the thread around the back of the needle from left to right to form a loop and pull out the needle to get the next loop of the chain. Okay. Keep on with this with the procedure till the end. Let's watch another video for a more details on this stitch.
initiates stitches done on the fabric. The stitch formed by two crossing arms and may be used for outlining as borders or to fill in an entire area. Here are the steps to do the process stitch. Step 1. Bring the needle out through A and take it diagonally across B. Bring it back again through C which lies vertically below A. Step 2. Now put the needle in through D which lies vertically above B. You have made a single cross. Step 3. Continue by putting the needle in through A and bring it out through previous point D. Step 4. Put the needle in through F to complete the second cross. Now, bring the needle out to the previous point E to begin for the third cross. Continue the process. Watch this video for more details on how to do the process stitch. is the French knot. This stitch involves wrapping the thread once or twice around the needle and pulling on the surface of the fabric. Here are the steps to do the French knot. Step 1, bring the needle out through A. Step 2, now place the needle close to the fabric, wrap the thread around it twice as shown. Step 3, keep the lower end of the thread pulled in with your fingers while putting the needle back in a point just close to A or even through A. Step 4. Pull down the needle through the fabric. You will see your first French knot form. I will demonstrate to you on how to do it. Please watch carefully. Now you know the basic embroidery stitches. You can make your project using the skills you have learned today. But before you make your own project, let us discuss the safety and precautionary measures in embroidery. First, make sure that needles are in pin cautions before and after using it. Do not use the rusty needles and pins in your work. Never leave tools unattended. Use the proper safety gear such as pin bolt. Do not run or engage in horseplay while working. Return your tools and materials to their storage place or sewing box after use. When working with thinking needles, keep them closer no longer than 35 cm from your eyes. There you have it. Now you know all the things you need to know to start embroidery. So what are you waiting for? 
major embroidery project now. Okay, let us find out if you learned something from our lesson. Let us have a short quiz. This is a multiple choice quiz. All you have to do is to identify the following stitches described and write the correct letter on your paper. Are you ready? Let's begin. Here is item number one. It is comprised of x shaped stitches done on the fabric. A. Chain stitch B. Cross stitch C. Running stitch D. French knot Item number two. It is also considered being the easiest stitch for outlining. A. Chain stitch B. Cross stitch C. Running stitch D. French knot Item number three. It is great for making a solid line. A. Back stitch B. Chain stitch C. Cross stitch D. French knot Item number four. It forms a row of lead, lead stitches. It gives a chain like appearance. A. Back stitch B. Chain stitch C. Cross stitch D. French knot Item number five. This stitch involves wrapping the thread once or twice around the needle and pulling through to form a knot on the surface of the fabric. A. Back stitch B. Chain stitch C. Cross stitch D. French knot let us check your answers. Number one, the answer is letter B, cross stitch. Number two, the answer is letter C, running stitch. Number three, the answer is A, back stitch. Number four, the answer is D, French knot. Okay, please count your answers. For those who got the perfect score, congratulations. For those who got three and four, very good. And for those who got two and below, you need to study harder. Please get your compendium of notes and review your answers. I am really happy that you can now make your different stitches. It will help you not only with your project, but also it will help you relieve your stress on a very tiring day. Before we will end, let us answer some questions. Question from Trixie Gabriel. What are the benefits of hand embroidery? The benefits of hand embroidery are it is therapeutic. It keeps your fine motor skills sharp and your mind focused. Also, it enhances creativity and it can be another way of expressing yourself. Another question from Dia Dolorosa of Pitumbayong National High School. What should I do if I enjoy myself with used needle? Well, you need to wash the wound using running water, dry the wound and cover it with a waterproof plaster or dressing. I will leave you a proverb to reflect on. Beautiful things come together with one stitch at a time. Our lesson has ended. I hope you have learned a lot on our lesson today. Keep watching on our TV channel 26 for more updates. Remember, my dear students, in TLE, we aim for knowledge, skills, and progress. This is Project Shine Aral Galakenyo, brought to you by the Department of Education, Division of Arlac Province, in cooperation with DCTC, Ocho Dos Ocho, AM Station, Radio Filipino Tarlac. Sponsored by our ever-supportive Congressman Charlie Uwanko of First District Representative. Thank you and Godspeed. Until next time, for another fun learning experience in TLE. I am Teacher Lailani G. Castillo of Nambalan Integrated School, your teacher broadcaster for today. Thank you and enjoy learning in the new normal. Tuberculosis Gaano katagal ang gamutan ng TB? Ang tuberculosis treatment ay umaabot ng 6 hanggang 8 buwan na pag-inom ng gamot. Kapag naman ito ay naantala, maaaring umabot ng dalawang taon ang gamutan. Tandaan! Ang TB ay hindi na mamana, hindi nakukuha sa pagpapagod, pagpupuyat o pagkatuyo ng pawis sa likod. Hindi na ipapasa sa paghawak ng gamit ng taong may TB. Hindi nakukuha sa kagat ng lamok. 
kaya kung may suspetsa, agad kumonsulta. Libre ito. Maging bahagi ng TB Free Pinas. Konsultayo sa ating mga primary care provider para sa Healthy Pilipinas. Paalala mula sa Department of Health. Ang ASEA New Zealand Afforestation Project o ANZAP ay sumusunod at umaayon sa isa sa limang haligi ng Provincial Government of Terlac, Kalikasan Muna. Although Terlac is landlocked, the province is teeming with natural resources and beauty and we Terlacenos are the stewards of this bounty. na ang jeep ay ang pinakasikat na uri ng transportasyon sa Pilipinas? May nagsasabi na ang pangalang jeep ay hango sa salitang jeepy na ang ibig sabihin ay general purpose or government purpose na naglalarawan ng military jeep na ginamit noong World War II. Pagkatapos ng digmaan, iniwan na ng mga sundalong Amerikano ang libu-libong jeep sa kalsada ng Maynila. Ang matibay at makulay na jeep ni Ngaraw ay truly mestizo dahil sa half-local at half-foreign na katangian nito. Lam nyo na, yan ang jeepney! Kumusta mga video kong tagapakinig? Nagbabalik ang inyong paaralang panghimpapawid, Aral Tarlac Henyo, sa RTV Tarlac, Channel 26, at sa bayang naririnig sa DZDZ 828, Radyo Pilipino Tarlac. Ayun rin ay napapanood sa FB Live ng RTV Tarlac Channel 26. Sumasahim pa pagwin mula sa bayan ng Pura Tarlac, mula sa bayan ng San Clemente, mula rito sa Puro Elementary School, Pura Tarlac, sa bayan ng Kapas Tarlac. Ako, ang inyong buro, na maghahatid sa inyo ng makabuluhang pagtalakay sa ating karadim. here on RTV Tarlac, Channel 26, and Channel 100 for Converge Cable subscribers. Simulcast over DCTC 828 AM station, Radio Pilipino Tarlac. I am Rosemary Marimlabanag, your teacher broadcaster on Grade 8 Health Education. And I am here to give you this remote live broadcast all the way from Dap Dap High School, Bamban West District, Province of Tarlac. And good afternoon also parents and guardians who are with us on the radio, on TV, and on Facebook live stream. Before we begin... Be reminded of the following to maximize remote learning. 
first, make sure that you are in a comfortable and quiet area, free from noise or any distractions. Second, you should have your learning activity sheet for health day one, your module or compendium of notes, pen and paper or study notebook. Third, be interactive by typing your comments in our chat box. Also by answering the questions during activity time. And most importantly, I want you to pay attention, focus, and enjoy while listening and learning on our discussion. At this juncture, let me ask you on how well do you know the nature of diseases? Let us see by answering your first activity. Use your pen and paper, also our chat box, in posting your answers. Are you ready, grade 8 learners? Let me read the directions. Read very carefully each statement about the nature of communicable diseases. Write true if the statement is correct and false if the statement is wrong. For the first item, organisms like bacteria and viruses are all over the environment. What is your answer? Very good! The answer is true! Item number two. Many of the most common diseases are caused by tiny microorganisms called pathogens. What do you think is the answer? Amazing! The answer is true! Item number three. Communicable diseases come from one infected person to another. What is your answer? You are absolutely right if your answer is true. Item number four. Stomach ache is one symptom that can be manifested by a communicable disease. If your answer is true, then you are correct. Item number five. COVID-19 is a form of virus disease. What do you think is the answer? If your answer is true, then you are correct. Did you get all the correct answers, class? If you do, congratulations! You did a great job! And don't lose hope for those who didn't get a perfect score. You may always go back and watch this episode for reference. So, I guess you are all set for this fun-filled informative lesson. And to begin with, are you familiar to the following quotes? Starting with, health is wealth. Followed by, prevention is better than cure. And lastly, good health is a choice. With the context of these three quotes I presented, do you agree or disagree? Well, if you agree to their context, excellent! And what do these quotes and statements mean or indicate? Well, if you guess about taking care of our health, disease prevention, and control, you got it right! And that will be our topic for day one on the third quarter of health education, entitled, Communicable Diseases. At the end of the lesson, you are expected to First, define communicable diseases. Second, identify pathogens and its kinds. Third, define infection and its stages. And lastly, analyze the leading causes of morbidity and mortality in the Philippines. So let's start the ball rolling. Disease prevention and control are very important health concerns because they both affect the quality of people's lives. As we go along with our lesson, you will notice that the diseases you are experiencing or encountering can be prevented if you only know the sources and causes of it.
as well as on how to control them. And we are referring to communicable or infectious diseases. It is known as infectious diseases or transmissible diseases. These are illnesses that result from the infection, presence, and growth of pathogens in an individual or other animal host. And what are these pathogens? Pathogens are disease-causing biologic agents. These biological agents are widely found in the natural environment. Majority of the agents are harmless, however, some may have potential to cause ill health. And that includes bacteria, viruses, fungi, protozoa, and parasites. Let us have the types of pathogen. First is the bacteria. It is a single-celled organism without a nucleus. They are microscopic organisms not visible with the naked eye. They are also called germs. Some are good for you while others can make you sick. Human diseases caused by bacteria are strep throat, tuberculosis, food poisoning, tetanus, pneumonia, and syphilis. Second type of pathogen is the virus. The thread-like particles that reproduce by taking over living cells. An infectious agent of small size and simple composition that can multiply only in living things of animals, plants, or humans. These organisms are the human body's worst enemies and they are all considered as parasites. Human diseases caused by virus are common cold, flu, COVID-19, genital herpes, cold sores, measles, AIDS, genital warts, chicken packs, and small packs. The third type of pathogen is fungi. A simple organisms including mushrooms and yeast that grow in a single cells or thread-like filaments. They prefer dark and damp environments that invade mainly deep tissues of the hair, nails, and skin. Human diseases caused by fungi are ringworm, athlete's foot, tinea, candidiasis, histoplasmosis, and mushroom poisoning. The fourth type of pathogen is protozoa, a single-celled organism with a nucleus that are larger than bacteria and have a more complex cellular structure. Most of these are harmless and they are most common in tropical areas that have poor sanitation. Human diseases caused by protozoa are malaria, African sleeping sickness, and amoebic dysentery, a severe intestinal infection. The last type of pathogen is the parasitic worm. A worm is classified as parasite. A parasite is a disease-causing organism that lives on humans or another animals and derives its nourishment from its host. Parasitic worms also called helminths, which live in humans. Helminth eggs contaminate food, water, air, feces, pets, wild animals, and objects such as toilet seats and door handles. The eggs enter the body of a human through the mouth, nose, and anus. Once inside the body, helminth eggs usually lodge on the intestines, hatch, grow, and multiply. Common helminths are the following. First is roundworm. They hatch and live in the intestines. Second, helminths are pinworms, are also called 
seed worms, and thread worms. Pin worms hatch and live primarily in the intestines. The eggs usually enter the body through the anus, nose, and mouth, through inhaled air or fingers that have touched a contaminated object. The third helminth is Trichina spiralis. This worm lives in the intestines and causes a serious illness known as trichinosis. The eggs usually enter the body via raw or uncooked pork, sausage, and vermin. The fourth helminth is tapeworm. Tapeworms live in intestines. The eggs usually enter the body via raw or uncooked beef. The fifth and the last common helminth is fluke worm. They live in different locations in the body, including the intestines, the bladder, rectum, liver, spleen, lungs, and veins. Prevention of helminth diseases usually requires frequent washing of hands, frequent cleaning of bathrooms and kitchens, and thorough cooking of food they infest, mainly beef, pork, sausage, and bear meat. Water supply should be chlorinated if possible. When the susceptible host, the person who cannot resist a microorganism invading its body, the host is infected. So, infection defines as the state produced by the establishment of one or more pathogenic agents in or on our body of a suitable host. There are three stages of infection. First is the incubation stage. It occurs when a person acquires the pathogen. For example, chicken fox, it takes two to three weeks of incubation. For common colds, one to two days of incubation. Influenza takes one to three days and 15 to 18 days, four months. The second stage is the prodromal stage. It is the start when non-specific signs and symptoms appear. For example, Common cold is characterized by sore throat, sinus, congestion, and rhinitis, mumps manifested by earache, high fever, and salivary gland swelling. And the third is convalescent stage. It is considered as the recovery stage. This is the last stage the interval when acute symptoms of infection must intervene to prevent the infection from developing further. In epidemiology, a triad model called chain of infection states that infectious diseases occur because of the interaction between an infectious agent, a host, and their environment. And that's the term for the mode of transmission. Again, it is the method by which the organism moves from one host to another. There are two ways of mode of transmission. First is the general transmission. And second is the human-to-human -human transmission. General transmission is done through abiotic environmental factors like wind transmitted by inhalation of spores and water transmitted by entering into the skin. Next is by general animal vectors mode of transmission. Example, the mosquitoes which causes malaria and dengue. Another example is fleas through bubonic plague, an infection caused by mice, rats, squirrels, and other animals that may be infected. Another way of mode of transmission is through human to human. First, it can be done by direct contact wherein pathogen survives best inside the body. Second, it can be done in direct contact 
we're in, pathogen survives at harsh environment and can pick up source of diseases from surface of air. Third is by droplets, wherein pathogens are in droplets but do not survive long in this way. Fourth, it can be airborne, wherein pathogens aerosolize and stay infective. And fifth is the fecal oral. It is transmitted through contaminated water or food. The mode of transmission occurs when the agent leaves its reservoir or host through a portal of exit, then conveyed by some mode of transmission and enters through an appropriate portal of entry to infect a susceptible host. This sequence is sometimes called the chain of infection. But what is the portal of entry we are referring for? The portal of entry is an opening allowing the microorganism enter the host. They can be passed through the following. Body orifice, an opening through which something may pass, mucous membranes, breaks in the skin, respiratory system through inhalation, gastrointestinal system through ingestion, urinary and reproductive tracts, sexual contact. Okay, learners, I hope you listened and took note of important learnings. Much more on our next sessions. Before we end our lesson today, remember that communicable diseases do not only threaten the sick person, but also our family and the society in general. Thus, protecting ourselves and our families from diseases are both personal and social responsibilities. The spread of communicable diseases threatens the populace, so each must understand how to prevent the spread and learn how to manage it. And now, I challenge you to become a catalyst for the control and prevention of communicable diseases. You just need to consistently demonstrate personal responsibility and heartful practices in order to prevent and control communicable diseases. And that concludes our discussion for this afternoon. At this point in time, let us see how well you understood the lesson. I had prepared a short quiz for you to answer. Write your answer on your study notebook or learning activity sheets. I will read the question twice for you to have enough time to think of the answer and write it down. Learners, are you ready? Let me read the direction. Supply the missing letters on each item to complete the word. A hint is provided on each item. Item number one. These are known as infectious diseases or transmissible diseases. These are known as infectious diseases or transmissible diseases. Item number two. These are diseases causing biologic agents that include viruses, bacteria, fungi, protozoa, and parasites. Again, these are diseases causing biologic agents that include viruses, bacteria, fungi, protozoa, and parasites. Item number three. It is defined as the state produced by the establishment of one or more pathogenic agents in or on our body of a suitable host. Again, it is defined as the state produced by the establishment of one or more pathogenic agents in or on our body of a suitable host. Item number four. It is the mode or method by which the organism moves from one host to another. Again, it is the mode or method by which the organism moves from one host to another. Item number five. 
It is a person who cannot resist a microorganism invading its body. Again, it is a person who cannot resist a microorganism invading its body. Okay, let us check your answers. Be honest in checking. This is one way to prove if you understood well the lesson. Answer number one is communicable diseases. Answer number two is pathogen. Answer number three is infection. Answer number four is transmission. And answer number five is susceptible host. Who got all the correct answers? Okay, count your score now. For those who got perfect score, congratulations, job well done. You have listened carefully. For those who got four, very good. For those who got three, still good. For those who got two, fair enough. For those who got one, still okay, don't lose hope and keep trying. You may always go back and watch this episode for reference. That's all for today. I hope you learned a lot and let this knowledge be seen in your actions, words, and way of living. This is the best legacy you can contribute not only to you and your family but to the whole nation in promoting health. If you have questions about our lesson today, just PM me or text me on my number 0907-477-5689. I would be glad to answer all your questions. Again, this is Project Shine Aral Tarlac Henyo, brought to you by the Department of Education, Division of Tarlac Province, in cooperation with DZTC 828 AM Station. This has been your teacher broadcaster, Ma'am Rosemary Marimlabanag, your health education aid anchor. See you and God bless everyone. Until next time! Lucena, 88.3, Legaspi, 96.1, Surigao, 95.9, Putua, 92.1, Mindoro, 96.7, Tacloba, 99.3, Valer, 95.1, Puerto Princesa, Palawan. This is your one, your only one, your only, only one, 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 one FM. Radio Filipino. Sa -sa saan mang bahagi ng Pilipinas? Sa -sa saan mang bahagi ng mundo? A ano mang uri ng pamumuhay? Kabahagi mo. Kabahagi mo. Radio Filipino. Radio Filipino. Sumasahim papawid sa DWPR. 1296. Dagupa. DZTC. 828. Tarlac. DZLT. 1188. Lucena. DZYM. 1539. Mindoro. DWRL. 1080. Legaspi. DWRL. RN 657 Naga DYRB 540 Cebu DYRL 1035 Bacolo DYRN 1134 Dumaguete DXCO 1044 Cagayan de Oro DXGS 765 General Santo DXOC 1494 Osami DXOW 981 Davao at Radio Pilipino Podcast Center Manila Ito ang kabahagi mo Radio Pilipino Napapakinggan on On air. on air and online, online. sa buong mundo sa pamamagitan ng www.radiopilipino.com radiopilipino.com impormasyong may kalidad at serbisyong may halaga kasama katuwa kapino kabahagi mo kabahagi mo radio pilipino radio pilipino
upang matugunan ang mga kinakaharap na pagsubok ng mga guro at mag-aaral sa gitna ng kasalukuyang pandemya. Nagsanib tulong si na Congressman Charlie Cojuanco ng unang distrito ng Tarlac, DepEd Region 3 Regional Director Dr. May B. Eklar at Tarlac Schools Division Superintendent Dr. Ronaldo Poson para sa isang napapanahong proyekto na tinaguri ang Project Shine Aral Tarlacenyo. Ang mga mag-aaral ng Grade 4 at Grade 5 Ganon din ang grades 8 and 9 sa buong probinsya ng Tarlac, kasalukuyang sumasa ilalim sa radio-based instruction. Katuwang ang himpilang DZTZ 828 kHz AM at RTB Tarlac, Channel 26. Ang Tarlac po nangunguna po ngayon pagdating po sa radio-based instruction. Marami pong humahanga sa atin. I'm very happy this station, itong DZTZ, could reach the whole of Region 3. Hindi natin alam. We are contributing. We are creating a very big bend in the history of Philippine education. And I am proud. I am here in Tarlac. This is the noble cause of education in which you and I, without you knowing it, we are bound to do. project natin na Project Shine is a natural consequence dahil sa nangyari sa buong mundo. Let's continue to work together. I think it's very Filipino to practice uh, bayanihan in anything or most of the things that we do. And this is a manifestation of that. No? We have private sector, we have DepEd, we have local government, all working together. And I hope the parents of some of these children, especially the parents that did not graduate from school or hindi nakapag-aral nung sila ay bata, eh sana naman gamitin na nila itong opportunity na mag-schooling na rin sila kasama ng mga bat anak nila para mag-banding pati ang mga magulang sa mga bata. I look at this as doing God's work. Diba? So if you do God's work, it feels right. It's righteous. It's for good, not for evil. Good morning and uh, happy uh, learning uh, grade 4. Uh, welcome to Adal Tarlac Henyo here on RTV Tarlac Channel 26. Simulcast over DZDZ828. Radio Pilipino Tarlac. I am Teacher Mercy Pacheco Bognot. This is Alistair Aidatu. I am Marie Josephine B. Andrade. I am Teacher Princess Marie M. Duenas. And I will be your teacher broadcaster for today. The word boondocks, which is now part of the English language dictionary and vocabulary, comes from the Tagalog word boondock, meaning mountain. Catch Aral Tarlacenyo every Monday through Friday from 8.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. over Radio Pilipino DCTC 828 and streamed live on Facebook page and YouTube channel of RTV Tarlac Channel 26. I am Jeremiah Gaputan, your English teacher broadcaster. Let's learn English together only here on Aral Tarlacenyo. grade 9 learners, welcome to another day of a fun learning experience. This is Project Shine Aral Tarlacenyo here on RTV Tarlac Channel 26. Simulcast over DZTC 828 Radio Pilipino Tarlac. I am Ma'am Jacqueline M. Tamayo, broadcasting live here at Dup Dup High School, Bamban Tarlac. 
And it is my honor to be with you in this exciting learning experience in English 9. Before anything else, I want you to get your paper, pen, and learning activity sheets. Also, make sure to find a seat where you can listen comfortably to our discussion. Are you ready, grade 9 learners? Well, that's great. Today, we will discuss determining the relevance and the truthfulness of the ideas presented in the material viewed. At the end of the lesson, you are expected to, number one, determine the elements of the material viewed. Number two, identify the theme of the material viewed. But before we proceed with today's lesson, let's have a review of the previous discussion. Last time, you have learned about the types of viewing materials and the elements of viewing materials with teacher Melchor. Do you still remember? Okay, let's see by answering activity one. Read the following statements. Decide whether you agree or disagree with the given statements. Write A if you agree and DA if you disagree. For those who are watching our FB Live, you can encode your answers in the comment section. And for those who are listening to the radio and watching TV, you can write your answers on your learning activity sheets. I will give you three seconds to answer each item, and I'll read each question twice. Is that clear? Well, that's good. Here is item number one. Movie, vlog, and radio commercials are types of viewing materials. Movie, vlog, and radio commercials are types of viewing materials. Do you agree or disagree with the statement? I'll give you three seconds to answer. The correct answer is A. Agree. Good job! Let's proceed with number two. Photo and infographic are not viewing materials. Photo and infographic are not viewing materials. You have three seconds to answer. The answer is DA. Photo and infographic are also viewing materials. They are called print viewing materials. Next is item number three. Posters Maps and graphs are examples of viewing materials. Posters, maps, and graphs are examples of viewing materials. What is the answer? If you answered A, agree, you got it right. Let us proceed to item number four. Genre. Author or audience and purpose are the only elements of viewing materials. Genre, author or audience and purpose are the only elements of viewing materials. Do you agree or disagree? The correct answer is DA, disagree. We have four elements of viewing materials. The genre, audience or author, purpose, and message. And for the last item, number five. The viewing material that refers to content is the message. The viewing material that refers to content is the message. So what is the answer? That's correct. The answer is A, agree. Great job, grade 9 learners! You have successfully answered Activity 1. Now, let's proceed with Activity 2. 
to practice your understanding of the elements of viewing materials. Your task is to examine each picture then answer the questions that follow. Here is picture number one. The question is, what is the genre of these TV programs? What is the genre of these TV programs? A. Sports B. Documentary C. News or D. Weather Report What is the answer? The answer is letter B. Good job! Remember that genre is a category of artistic composition. Now, let's look at picture number two. The question for picture number two is, What is the purpose of these movies? What is the purpose of these movies? Is it A, to entertain? B, to inform? C, to persuade? Or D, to explain? So what is your answer? If you answered letter A, you got it right. The purpose of the material hopes to achieve is to entertain. Let's proceed with number three. The question for picture three is, who are the target audience of this infographic? Who are the target audience of this infographic? A. Customers B. Foreigners C. Workers or D. Students What do you think is the answer? That's correct! The answer is letter D. Remember that when we are talking about the target audience, we always have to remember the question for whom the material is created. Okay, now let's proceed with item number four. The question is, what is the message of Rachel Patton's fight song music video? What is the message of Rachel Patton's fight song music video? A. Hope B. Love, C. Death, or D. Revenge? What is your answer? That's correct! The answer is letter A. Remember that when we are talking about a message, we are referring to its content, topic, and theme. And our last item, we have number five. The question is, what is the theme of the movie The Little Mermaid? What is the theme of the movie The Little Mermaid? A. Love often requires choices and sacrifices. B. Revenge. C. Death. Or D. Environment and climate change. What is your answer, Grade 9 learners? Very good! The answer is A. Did you get the five answers correctly? Great job, everyone! You have successfully mastered our first lesson. Now, let us proceed to our next lesson. Determining the theme of the material viewed. So, what is a theme? Let's define. Theme is the central, underlying, and controlling idea or insight of a work of literature. The idea the writer wishes to convey about the subject. The writer's view of the world or a revelation about human nature. In other words, theme refers to the deeper meaning of a written work or viewing material. It is the message the writer is trying to convey. They sometimes let their readers and viewers analyze, reflect, and interpret it without directly stating it. 
Let me give you some examples of themes. We have love, human versus nature, good versus evil, human versus technology, revenge, and death. So, to be able to find the theme, the question you should ask is, what is the author trying to say to the reader? Is that clear? Okay, great. Now, let us try to determine the theme of the following materials. Are you familiar with these? I know you are. So we have number one, Romeo and Juliet. And number two, the Disney movie Encanto. Now, let's try to determine their theme. Here are your choices. A. Love as a cause of violence. B. Togetherness and sacrifices for family. And let us see. War. What do you think is the answer? Okay. If you answered A, Love as a cause of violence as the theme of Romeo and Juliet, you got it right. And if you answered B, togetherness and sacrifices for family, for Encanto, your answer is correct. You did a great job. Now, to improve your skills in determining the theme, let's do activity three. Let's enrich. Your task is to watch and listen attentively to the Think Time, Teens, and Social Networks video. Then afterwards, you will be answering some questions that will help you determine its theme. Let us watch this video.
What can you say about the video? What do you think is the theme of it? Before we move on to that, let's answer this activity. Let's enrich. Write true if the statement is true and false if it's not. For question number one, some posts may appear harmless at the moment but appear to be unsafe in a different context. Some posts may appear harmless at the moment but appear to be unsafe in a different context. Is it true or false? What is your answer? Correct! The answer is true. Next is item number two. We have to be careful in posting our information on social media sites. We have to be careful in posting our information on social media sites. What is your answer? If you answer true, you got it right. Next is item number three. Social media sites created control settings for the protection of the users. Social media sites created control settings for the protection of the users. Is it true or false? Very good! The answer is true. Next is item number four. There is a controlled setting about who sees your posts online. There is a controlled setting about who sees your posts online. What is your answer? Good job, grade 9 learners! The answer is true. And for the last item, number 5. People often forget to use the control setting when posting on social media. People often forget to use the control setting when posting on social media. What do you think is the answer? Very good! The answer is true. So now, what do you think is the theme of the video you have watched? Is it about revenge, courage, death, good versus evil, or human versus technology? If you answered human versus technology, you are correct. We are living in a digital world. Technology made our lives easier and better, especially in our current situation. But we must always remember not to depend on it because we have a life outside social media. Do not let your online life overshadow your real life. And now for your assignment, answer items one to five. Let us think. Answer the given pictures. Put a check if the picture shows relevance in the new normal education and X if not. Justify your answer by explaining the two sentences why the picture is relevant or irrelevant. For item number one, we have two students wearing their face masks. For item number two, there is a boy playing a video game. In item number three, there is a student who is attending his online class. For item number four, we can see a student who is studying with his mother. And for item number five, we are seeing a limited 
face-to-face class. Again, your task in this activity is to analyze the given pictures. Put a check if the picture shows relevance in the new normal education and cross if not. Justify your answer by explaining in two sentences why the picture is relevant or irrelevant. Write your answers on your activity sheets and submit it to your English teacher. And that is the end of our lesson for today. That was a fantastic learning opportunity. You did an excellent job today, grade 9 learners. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson and will be able to apply it in the next episode. If you have any questions about the lesson, please contact me at 0910-811-7446 or you can always seek help from your English teachers. This is Project Shine Aral Tarlacheno here on RTV Tarlac Channel 26. Simulcast over DZTC 828 Radio Pilipino Tarlac. Once again, I am Ma'am Jacqueline M. Tamayo, your English 9 teacher broadcaster. Good day everyone and God bless us all. Saan mang bahagi ng Pilipinas? Sa -sa Saan mang bahagi ng mundo? A ano mang uri ng pamumuhay? Ito ang Kabahagi Mo Radio Pilipino. Napapakinggan on air, on air. and online. online sa buong mundo sa pamamagitan ng www.radiopilipino.com Radiopilipino.com e Impormasyong may kalidad at serbisyong may halaga. Kasama, katuwa, kapinoy, Kabahagi Mo, Kabahagi Radio Filipino Radio Filipino Pitong paaralan sa probinsya ng Tarlac nagtagisa ng galing para sa isinagawang cheer dance competition. World Class Dancing Ayan ang ipinamalas ng pitong paaralan na nagtagisa ng galing sa pagsayaw para sa isinagawang cheer dance competition kamakailan sa Centro Mercato, Tarlac City. Ang pitong paaralan na nagpamalas ng kanilang galing ay ang Victoria National High School, Kapas Christian High School Inc., Jose Viap National High School, Mababanaba National High School sa San Jose, Estipona National High School, Tarlac National High School, at Mungkada National High School. Kanya-kanyang techniques at iba't ibang moves ang ipinakita ng mga kalaho. Mula sa game na game na pagsayaw hanggang sa paghagis ng mga flyers, ipinakita ng mga ito ang pagiging consistent ng kanilang routines. Bukod sa isinagawang cheer and dance ng mga estudyante, Nagbigay saya rin ng mga guests na sina AJ Balmores at George Dilumen. Sa mensahe ni Tarlac Province Governor Susan Eyap, pinasalamatan nito ang lahat ng kalahok sa nasabing kompetisyon. Daluhan taong din tayong hindi nagkita-kita at nagkasama-sama para sa ating Kanlaing Festival. Pero ngayong 2023, we're celebrating it live, no? Ang 7th Kanlaing natin. Naiuwi na Mungkada National High School ang third place. Second place naman ang Turlock National High School at nag-champion naman ang Estepona National High School sa Pura. Mag-uuwi ang third place ng 30,000 pesos, 50,000 pesos naman para sa second place at 80,000 pesos naman para sa champion. Ayon kay Ronaline Pasqua at Darius Noel, mga coach ng Stingers o Estepona National High School, sulit umano ang kanilang pagod sa pagtuturo. Lahat ng itinuro ng mga ito ay nakuha ng mga bata. 
this is our first time to be the champion, but we promise to the next years we will bring back ulit yung yung championship na nakamit ng mga bata. Kung paano namin inalagaan yung mga bata this year, much more these coming years. Dagdag pa rito, ipinahayag din ni Principal Arlene P. Apostol ang kanyang pasasalamat sa Provincial Government of Tarlac para sa ganitong aktibidad. Gayun din para sa hard work ng mga bata. Ayon naman sa captain ng mga stingers na si Jestril Gapinpin, hindi makapaniwala ito na sila ang nag-champion para sa ginanap na cheer dance competition. Pinasalamatan din ito ang lahat ng tumulong at nagturo sa kanilang grupo. First na championship, syempre uh, malaking ano po sa amin yun, um, proud po ang buong Aribabura. Maraming maraming salamat po kay Governor Susan Yap sa patimpalak na ito upang mamamalas po ang aming galing at lakas. Ang naganap na cheer dance competition ay parte ng selebrasyon ng 7 Kanlahi Festival 2023 sa probinsya ng Tarlac na naging daan upang maipakita ng mga bata ang kanilang galing sa larangan ng pagsayaw. Para sa RTV Tarlac Channel 26, ako si Jam Torrio, nagbabalita. Ba, na ang Pilipinas ay mayroong 7,641 islands mula sa bilang na 7,107 islands na dagdagan ito ng 534 na isla noong 2017. Tanging 2,000 lamang sa mga islang ito ang natitirhan. Alam nyo na! Yan ang mga isla sa Pilipinas! Alam nyo ba na ang gitnang Luzon ay tinaguri ang banga ng bigas ng bayan o kamalig ng palay ng Pilipinas dahil dito nagbumula ang malaking produksyon ng bigas sa ating bansa. Ito ay binubuo ng mga lalawigan ng Aurora, Pataan, Pampanga, Nueva Ecija, Zambales at Tarlac. Pagalihin natin manood ng Araw Tarlac Henyo, lunes hanggang biyernes, alas 8.30 ng umaga hanggang alas 5.30 ng hapon. Ako si Binibining Pia Izrin Kapiral, ang inyong teacher broadcaster sa Araling Panlipunan dito sa Project Shine Araw Tarlac Henyo. Lagi nating tandaan ang pag-aaral ng Araling Panlipunan ay tungo sa daan ng pagiging makajos, makakalikasan, makatao at makabansa. sa ating Aral Tarlac Henyo ng Schools Division of Tarlac Province, hatid sa inyo ng RTV Tarlac Channel 26 at DZTC 828 Radio Pilipino Tarlac. Isang mapayapa at ligtas na hapon, kabataang Tarlac Henyo. Narito na naman tayo, nagsisikap at nagpupunyagi na maging makajos makatao, makakalikasan at makabansa. Kamusta na kayo mga ginigiliw kong grade 9 eco learners? Ang aking pagbati at paghanga sa inyong masidhing pagpupunyagi sa patuloy na pag-aaral sa Himpapawid upang matuto sa kabila ng hamon ng pagkakataon ang COVID-19 pandemic. Ako ang inyong guro sa Araling Panlipunan Grade 9, Ma'am Regine De Luna, magtuturo sa inyo via remote live broadcasting mula dito sa Bayan ng Kamiling. Sasamahan at gagabayan kayong maunawaan ang nilalaman ng ating aralin patungkol sa patakarang piskal. 
Bago tayo magsimula sa ating talakayan, ay narito ang ilan sa mga paalala. Siguraduhin kayo ay nasa komportabling lugar at maayos na napapanood at napapakinggan ang ating live broadcast. Matanong ko lang, nagmiryenda na ba kayo? Mabuti naman, dahil nararapat lamang na may laman ang inyong chan upang mas maging alerto ang inyong pag-iisip at maayos ninyong maunawaan ang ating aralin sa hapong ito. Sa puntong ito, nais kong kunin ninyo ang inyong module sa araling panlipunan para sa ikaanim na linggo ng ikatlong markahan na may pamagat na layunin at pamamaraan ng patakarang piskal. Ihanda rin ng inyong ballpen at sulatang papel upang maitala ninyo ang mga mahalagang impormasyon na aking mababanggit. Ang ating paksa sa araw na ito ay patungkol sa konsepto ng patakarang piskal. Ang dalawang paraan upang pangasiwaan ng pamahalaan ang paggamit ng pondo, ang expansionary fiscal policy at ang contractionary fiscal policy at ang pagbubuwis. Bago tayo magsimula sa ating paksa ngayong araw, ay alalahanin muna natin ang ating naging aralin noong nakaraang linggo. Natatandaan pa ba ito? Magaling! Sa nakaraang episode ay tinalakay natin ang konsepto, dahilan, epekto at mga pagtugon upang malutas ang mga suliraning kaakibat ng inflasyon. Ayon sa Economics Glossary, ang inflasyon ay tumutukoy sa pagtaas ng pangkalahatang presyo ng mga piling produkto na nakapaloob sa basket of goods. Samantala, deplasyon naman ang tawag kung may pagbaba sa halaga ng presyo ng mga bilihin. At hyperinflation naman kung saan ay patuloy na tumataas bawat oras, araw at linggo ang presyo ng mga bilihin. Tinalakay din natin ang naging dahilan at epekto ng inflasyon sa ating ekonomiya, gaya ng labis na salapi sa sirkulasyon, oil deregulation, pagbabayad ng dayuhang utang, kartel, mataas na gastos sa produksyon, export-oriented o kaya naman ay import-dependent. At ngayon sa palagay ko ay handa ka na sa ating bagong paksa para sa araw na ito. Inaasahan na sa pagtatapos ng aralin ay inyong masusuri ang layunin at pamamaraan ng patakarang piskal. Sa lahat po ng mga magulang at mag-aaral sa ikasiyam na baitang na nakikinig sa ating broadcast, kung kayo po ay may katanungan o nais linawin ukol sa ating paksa, maaari kayong magbigay ng mensahe sa aking messenger o Facebook account o tumawag at mag-text sa numerong naka-flash sa inyong screen. Ang konsepto ng patakarang piskal ay tumutukoy sa behavior ng pamahalaan patungkol sa paggasta at pagbubuwis upang mabago ang galaw ng ekonomiya. Tulad mo, ang pamahalaan ay nag-iisip rin na parang consumer bago ito gumasta at kung paano ito kikita. Ngunit, tandaan, na priority ng pamahalaan ang kapakanan ng mamamayan at ng bansa kung kaya't ang kanyang mga desisyon ay nakabatay dito. Ang salitang piskal o fiscal ay nagmula sa salitang Latin na fiscus na ang ibig sabihin ay basket o treasury. Sa sinaunang Roma, 
Ang mga nakokolekt ng buwis ay itinatago sa mga basket. Sa paglipas ng panahon, ang salitang ito ay naiugnay sa bag ng salapi o partikular na salaping hawak ng pamahalaan. Kaya't sa madaling salita, ito ay tumutukoy sa gampanin ng pamahalaan patungkol sa paggasta at pagbubuwis. Ang pamahalaan ay may malaking papel na ginagampanan upang mapanatili ang kaayusan ng ekonomiya. Ito ay ayon naman kay John Maynard Keynes taong 1935. Ipinapaliwanag nito na ang paggasta ng pamahalaan ay nakapagpapasigla ng ekonomiya sa pamamagitan ng paggamit ng lahat ng resources na mayroon ang isang bansa o lugar. Ito naman ay magdudulot ng mas maraming oportunidad para sa trabaho o negosyo. Ang patakarang piskal ay ang pagpapatupad ng episyenteng alokasyon, tamang distribusyon ng yaman o kita, at pagkakaroon ng pagkontrol ng pamahalaan sa supply ng salapi upang mapatatag ang ekonomiya ng bansa. Ito ay isinasagawa sa pamamagitan ng pagbubuwis at paggastos ng pamahalaan. Ang pagbabawas o pagdagdag ng paggasta sa pamahalaan at singil sa buwis ay isang paraan upang maiwasan ang mga bagay na nakakahadlang sa ekonomiya at daloy ng gawaing pang-ekonomiya sa bansa. Naniniwala si Keynes na ang patakarang piskal ay gumaganap ng mahalagang papel upang maiahon ang ekonomiya sa depresyon. Ang depresyon ay kakikitaan ng matagalan at patuloy na pagtaas ng antas ng walang trabaho, pagbaba ng kita, malawakang pagbabawas ng pamumuhunan at pagliit ng iba bilang ng mga gawaing pang-ekonomiya. Inilalarawan ang patakarang piskal bilang manibela ng kabuang ekonomiya ng bansa. Isa rin itong paraan upang mapatatag ang pambansang ekonomiya. Nagsisilbi itong instrumento upang mapigilan ang hindi magandang kahihinatnan ng pagkakaroon ng kakulangan at kalabisan sa supply ng salapi sa ekonomiya. Binabalanse ng patakarang piskal ang mga gawaing pang-ekonomiya sa pamamagitan ng mga hakbang upang makontrol ang daloy ng salapi. Mailalarawan ang isang matamlay na ekonomiya kapag mababa ang supply ng salapi sa ekonomiya na magdudulot ng pagbaba ng kabuang demand. Maliit rin ang bilang ng mga mamumuhunan sa bansa kaya mababa ang kabuang produksyon at mataas ang bilang ng walang trabaho. Ipinapatupad ng pamahalaan ang expansionary fiscal policy upang mapataas ang output sa ekonomiya. Kapag dinagdagan ng pamahalaan ang gastos nito sa pamamagitan ng pagbalikat ng mga proyektong panlikunan, tulad ng tulay at kalsada, gumagasta ito para sa mga kasangkapan na magsisilbi namang kita ng mga bahay kalakal. Ang mataas na paggasta ng pamahalaan ay humihikayat sa mga bahay kalakal na dagdagan ang produksyon na magdudulot ng malaking kita. Lilikha rin ito ng karagdagang empleyo. Kapag may trabaho ang mga tao, magkakaroon sila ng kita na maaring gastusin upang lumaki ang kabuang demand at makakatulong upang sumigla ang matamlay na ekonomiya. 
Maari namang bawasan ng pamahalaan ang singil sa buwis, magbigay ng exemption sa buwis, pag-alis sa custom duties, pagpapababa sa sales tax at excise tax na binabayaran ng mga mamamayan sa bahay kalakal. Upang pasiglahin ang matamlay na ekonomiya lalo na sa panahon ng recession o upang mapigilan ang pagkakaroon nito. Samantala, karaniwang ipinapatupad ng pamahalaan ang contractionary fiscal policy kung lubhang napakasigla ng ekonomiya kung saan nagkakaroon ng overheated economy. Bunga ito ng mas mataas na kabuang demand kumpara sa kabuang supply. Mataas ang demand dahil mataas ang supply ng salapi sa ekonomiya. Ibig sabihin, hindi makaagapay ang mga bahay kalakal sa mabilis na pagtaas ng demand. Kung hindi kayang palawakin ang produksyon, Magbubunga lamang ito ng inflasyon dahil mas mataas ang demand kumpara sa supply bunga ng labis na salapi sa ekonomiya. Layunin ng contractionary fiscal policy na pabagalin ang lubhang mabilis na pagsulong ng ekonomiya sa pamamagitan ng pagbabawas sa gastusin ng pamahalaan at pagpapataas ng singil ng buwis. Isinasagawa ito ng pamahalaan upang maiwasan ang pagkakaroon ng inflasyon at ibalik sa normal na antas ang presyo ng produkto at serbisyo sa pamilihan. Samantala, ang pamahalaan ay may mahalagang papel kaugnay sa pagpapatupad ng patakarang piskal. Alam mo ba ang mga ito? Magaling! Ang pamahalaan ay ang pangunahing tagapagtakda ng mga patakaran na maghahatid sa ikakaganda ng kondisyon ng ating ekonomiya. Ito din ay ang siyang nagsasaayos ng mga pamamalakad upang matugunan ang ilang problemang pang-ekonomiya tulad ng pagbibigay regulasyon sa pagdaragdag at pagbabawas ng gastusin gayon din sa pagpapataas at pagpapababa ng singil ng buwis. Upang maayos na maisakatuparan ang lahat ng mga planong, proyekto at programa, ang ating pamahalaan ay nangangailangan ng salapi na tanging kinukuha sa buwis ng mamamayang Pilipino. Kita mula sa interes ng salaping nakadeposito sa Bangko Sentral ng Pilipinas, tulong mula sa mga dayuhan at pampribadong institusyon at mga ari-ariang pagmamay-ari ng pamahalaan. Ano ang buwis? Ito ay ang salaping kinokolekta ng pamahalaan sa mga mamamayan at ito ay maaring ipataw sa ari-arian gaya ng lupa, kotse, bahay o kaya naman sa mga kalakal at serbisyo. Ang pagbubuwis ay sakop ng kapangyarihan ng pamahalaan. Bakit kailangang magpataw ng mga buwis? Una, upang mapataas ang kita ng pamahalaan. Pangalawa, pagpapatatag ng ekonomiya. Ikatlo, mapapangalagaan ang industriyang panloob laban sa mga dayuhang kalakal. At pangapat, gamit para sa tamang distribusyon ng kita. At ang panghuli, regulasyon para sa tamang pagbili at pagkonsumo ng kalakal. Sa puntong ito, ating kilalanin ang iba't ibang uri ng buwis na sinisingil ng pamahalaan. 
Unahin natin ang ayon sa kung sino ang apektado. Una, tuwiran. Direktang kinokolekta mula sa mga individual at bahay kalakal. Ang halimbawa ay ang withholding tax. Kalawa ay ang hindi tuwiran. Nakokolekta naman ito mula sa mga kalakal at paglilingkod. Halimbawa ay ang value-added tax. Susunod naman ay ayon sa porsyentong ipinapataw. Una, proporsyonal. Ano mang kalagayan sa buhay, pantay lamang ang bahagdan ng buwis na ipinapataw. Ikalawa, progresibo. Habang tumataas ang kinikita ng isang individual o korporasyon, tataas din ang halaga ng buwis sa kanyang babayaran. Nakasaad ito sa 1987 sa Ligang Batas. At ang pangatlo, ang regresibo. Kapag lumalaki ang kita, bumababa naman ang kanyang buwis. Susunod naman ay ang ayon sa layunin. Para kumita, upang makalikom ng mga salaping magagamit sa mga operasyon nito, halimbawa ay ang sales tax, at income tax. Ikalawa, para magregularisa. Upang makontrol ang kalabisan ng isang gawain o negosyo. Halimbawa ay ang excise tax. At ang pangatlo, para magsilbing proteksyon. Upang pangalagaan ang interes ng mga lokal na sektor laban sa mga dayuhang kakompetensya. Ang halimbawa nito ay ang taripa. Natalakay na natin ang patakarang fiscal, expansionary fiscal policy at contractionary fiscal policy. Para malaman natin kung nakinig kayong mabuti sa ating talakayan, tayo ay magkakaroon ng isang maikling gawain. Kunin ang inyong learning activity sheet para sa gawain ito. Handa na ba kayo? Kung ang lahat ay handa na, tara, simulan na natin. Ang ating panuto para sa ating gawain ay tukuyin kung anong patakaran ang ipinapatupad ng bawat sitwasyon Isulat ang titik na EFP kung ito ay Expansionary Fiscal Policy at ang titik CFP naman kung ito ay Contractionary Fiscal Policy. Maaari din ninyong ilagay sa comment section ng ating FB Live ang inyong kasagutan. Ready na ba kayo? Unang bilang, mayroong mataas na pangkalahatang output at employment. Ang isinulat mo ba ay CFP? Tama ka dyan! Ikalawang bilang, pagbaba ng gastusin ng pamahalaan. Kung ang iyong sagot ay EFP, ikaw ay correct. Ikatlong bilang, pasiglahin ang matamlay na ekonomiya ng bansa. Ang sagot mo ba ay EFP? Ikaw ay tama ulit. Ikaapat na bilang. Pagtaas ng buwis. Expansionary o contractionary fiscal policy ba ito? Sa mga sumagot ng CFP, 
kayo ay magaling. At para sa ikalimang bilang, ang kabuang output at mababa ng higit sa inaasahan dahil sa hindi nagagamit ang lahat ng resources. Aking uulitin, para sa ikalimang bilang, ang kabuang output ay mababa ng higit sa inaasahan dahil sa hindi nagagamit ang lahat ng resources. At kung ang sagot mo dito ay EFP, ikaw ay talagang mahusay. Lahat ba ng inyong sagot ay tama? Napakahusay. Para sa mga hindi nakakuha ng perfect score, huwag kayong malungkot. May oras kayo para bumawi sa susunod. Para sa karagdagang gawain, gamit ang inyong learning activity sheet, basahin at unawain ang balita na nakasulat sa gawain tatlo ng inyong learning activity sheet. Sagutin ang mga gabay na tanong matapos ninyong mabasa ito. Uulitin ko para sa inyong karagdagang gawain, Gamit ang inyong learning activity sheet, basahin at unawain ang balita na nakasulat sa gawain tatlo ng inyong learning activity sheet. At sagutin ang mga gabay na tanong matapos ninyo itong basahin. Inaasahan ko na kayo ay natuto sa ating talakayan sa araw na ito. Muli, ako ang inyong guro sa Araling Panlipunan Grade 9, Ma'am Regine De Luna, mula dito sa Bilad High School, na nagsasabing ang pag-aaral ng Araling Panlipunan ay daan sa pagiging makajos, makatao, makakalikasan at makabansa. Hanggang sa muli! Saan mang bahagi ng Pilipinas? Sa saan mang bahagi ng mundo? A ano mang uri ng pamumuhay? Ito ang Kabahagi Mo Radio Pilipino. Napapakinggan on air, on air. and online. online sa buong mundo sa pamamagitan ng www.radiopilipino.com Radiopilipino.com Impormasyong may kalidad at serbisyong may halaga. Kasama, katuwa, kapinoy, Kabahagi Mo, Kabahagi Mo. Radio Pilipino Radio Pilipino Kino Onka Lahi 2023 The grand winner is Emerson Gomez Bumban Kauna-unahang Kino Onka Lahi Kinilala sa naganap na Coronation Night Sa Maria Cristina Park Confidence Glam and Perseverance Ayan ang mga ipinakita ng labing-anim na kalahok para sa naganap na Grand Coronation Night ng Ginoong Kanlahi 2023 sa Maria Cristina Park, Terlac Capitol Grounds. Bago pa man tumungtong sa stage ang mga kandidato, ay nasubok na ang kanilang galing para sa naganap na official sashing and presentation, preliminary competition at closed door preliminary ng mga ito. Ibinida na labing-anim na kalahok ang kanilang mga municipal costume na galing sa kanika nilang bayan. Bitbit ang aral at magagandang bagay at kaugalian na makikita sa kanilang bayan. Hinirang na best in municipal costume si Nakim Carlos Noel mula sa bayan ng San Jose at si Jewel Dan Kibuyen mula sa bayan ng Moncada. Umaapaw naman ang mga cheer ng manonood nang ibinida na ng mga kandidato ang kanilang beachwear kung saan nasungkit ni Mark Anthony C. mula sa Tarlac City ang kampiyonato. Nakuha naman ni Jewel Dan Kibuye ng Moncada ang Mr. Friendship Award. Mr. Personality naman si Peter James Domingo ng Mayantok. Mr. Photogenic naman si Aldrin David Jr. ng Santa Ignacia. 
Face of the Night si Tarlac City Renzulueta at Top Model Awardee at Best Informal Wear naman si Joe Marzon Dunuan ng Paniki. Dagdag pa rito, mayroon ding mga special awards na nasungkit ng mga kandidato mula sa iba't ibang sponsors. Muli namang pinatunay ng mga kandidato ang kanilang galing matapos i-anunsyo ang top 10 na kinabibilangan ng mga kalahok mula sa bayan ng Mayantok, Bamban, Tarlac City, Mungkada, Kapas, Santa Ignacia, Paniki at San Jose. Wagi namang nakuha ni Emerson Gomez Jr. mula sa Bamban ang kanyang pwesto matapos i-anunsyo ang top 5 na kinabibilangan ni Kim Carlos Noel ng San Jose, Jewel Dan Kibuy ng Mungkada, Mark Anthony C. ng Tarlac City at Aldrin David Jr. ng Santa Ignacia. Kanya-kanyang galing naman ang mga kalahok para sa pagsagot sa final question. Bago pa i-anunsyo ang mga nanalo, nagbigay naman ng maikling mensahe si Tarlac Province Governor Susan Ayap para sa lahat ng dumalo sa aktibidad. Magandang gabi, Tarlac! Hello? Ang uh, pinakaabang niya ng uh, moment Eh, uh, narito na ngayon, uh, ako yung una, gusto ko magpasalamat sa ating mga minamahal na mayor na narito ngayon para suportahan at mag-cheer sa kanilang mga kandidato. We've been, uh, this seventh Kanlahi Festival brought to you by the provincial government has been a success. To our uh, tourism department and all our department heads, Mr. Butch Ventura, our administrator, who took all the efforts to bring you a week-long festivities. A, uh, I hope all of you are happy. Happy ba? Yes, okay. So, hindi ko na po papatagalin. Gusto ko lang po magpasalamat sa na lahat ng narito ngayong gabi um, being one with us in our 7th Kanlahi Festival. Dagdag pa rito, bago pa man i-anunsyo ang mga nanalo ay kanya-kanyang cheer na ang mga manunood para sa kanilang mga pambato. Itinalaga ang ginoong kanlahi 2023 fourth runner-up si Jewel Dan Kibuyen ng Mongkada. Nasungkit naman ni Kim Carlos Noel ng San Jose ang third runner-up. Second runner-up naman si Mark Anthony C. ng Tarlac City. At first runner-up naman si Aldrin David Jr. ng Santa Ignacia. Ayon dito, ito umano ang kauna-unahang sumabak ito sa isang prestigious pageant. Pinasalamatan din ito si Governor Susan Yap at Santa Ignacia Mayor Nora Modomo. First and foremost, I'd like to thank everybody because without them, I won't be here. I am ecstatic, I am having fun, and I am grateful for each and every one of you. Aldrin Peralta David Jr. from Santa Ignacia and I took the first runner-up here in Gidong Kanlay 2023. Hinirang naman na kauna-unahang ginoong kanlahi 2023 si Emerson Gomez Jr. ng Bamban. Ayon dito, Confident siyang sumali sa patimpalak, bitbit ang kanyang advokasiyang may layuning makatulong sa iba. Dagal pong salamat kay Kayungan at uh, minta ko kayo po Kenny, Kenny Aldongeni at uh, hindi ko po kayo binigo mga kabamban. Maraming maraming salamat po uh, Mayor Alice Go for always supporting me in, uh, in my competitions. I am Emerson Gomez, 22, from the melting pot of the north, Tarlac, and this is your Ginoong Kalahi 2023. Ipinahayag naman ni Mayor Alice Guo ang kanyang pasasalamat kay Governor Susan Yap para sa matagumpay na aktibidad. Dagdag pa rito, nagbigay din ito ng mensahe para sa kakapanalong ginoong kanlahi 2023 at sa mga residente ng kanyang bayan. Uh, bilang ako po yung mayor po ng Bamban, nanalo pa ang Bamban, sobrang, sobrang, sobrang saya ko po. At gusto ko po rin po sabihin po sa lahat po ng kabamban, sobrang proud ko po. Maraming maraming salamat at congratulations po ulit. Thank you po. Ang naganap na ginoong kanlahi 2023 ay isang patunay na hindi lang bibida ang mga kalalakihan sa palakasan o pakisigat kundi kaya rin makipagsabay ng mga ito sa isang pageant. Para sa RTB Tarlac Channel 26, ako si Jam Torrio, nagbabalita. Kumusta mga video po ang tagapakinig? Nagbabalik ang inyong paaralang panghipapawid. Aral Tarlac Henyo. Sa so, RTB Tarlac Channel 26. At sa bayang naririnig sa DCTC 828, Radyo Pilipino Tarla. Ayun rin ay napapanood sa FB Live 
ng Art Digital Lab Channel 26. Sumasahim pa pawin mula sa bayan ng Pura Tarla. Mula sa bayan ng San Clemente. Mula rito sa Puro Elementary School Pura Tarla. Sa bayan ng Kapas Tarla. Ako, ang inyong guro. na maghahatid sa inyo ng makabuluhang pagtalakay sa ating karatid. Good afternoon, learners. Welcome to Aral Tarlac Ninyo. Here on RTV Tarlac, Channel 26, simulcast over Cable 100 and DZTC 828, Radio Filipino Tarlac. I am Dexter John S. Ramilo from Estepona National High School, your teacher broadcaster in TLE Agri-Fishery Arts, Agri-Crop Production, Grade 9. So, how are you, aspiring agriculturists? I hope that you're doing great. In case you have any questions for today's topic, you can text or call me at 0938-7982-199. Again, 0938-7982-199. Before we start, I suggest you to find a comfortable place that is free from any distractions. And also, don't forget to prepare your self-learning module in AgriCrop Production 9 and take notes on your TLE notebook. Now, dear students, are you ready to enjoy and learn something new? If so, then let's begin! Before we move on to our new lesson, let us first have a short review. We've discussed about the checking routine of gardening hat tools. Can you enumerate the proper tool checking routine on gardening hat tools? Let's check if you're answered correctly. These are the process of proper tool checking routine for gardening hat tools. First, inspect tools for any damage prior to its use. Second, check the handle and body casing of the tool for cracks or other damage. And lastly, if the tool has auxiliary or double handles, check to see that they are installed securely. Now learners, are the answers you have in mind the same as ones I have mentioned? Very good, learners! Now, let's move on to the objectives of today's lesson. First, is to identify PPE used for each body parts. Next, is to select the right PPE prior to the job. And lastly, value the importance of wearing PPE. I'm sure you are capable of achieving our lesson's objective in this topic. My dear learners, now kindly open your self-learning module in AgriCrop 9, Quarter 3, Week Number 4. Class, are you familiar with the term PPE? PPE stands for Personal Protective Equipment. It is the equipment worn to minimize exposure to hazards that cause serious workplace injuries and illnesses. Now learners, let's go to the sample PPEs for each body parts. For our head and face, we have the following PPEs. First is our sun hat. A sun hat 
also known as the floppy hat, harvest hat, or field hat, is a head covering specially designed to shade the face and shoulders from the sun. Next is the face shield. It is designed to protect the whole face from flying debris. For our nose and mouth, we have the garden mask. It is essential during the use and application of certain types of fertilizers, soil conditioners, and or compost. Most notably, masks are often worn by gardeners who suffer seasonal allergies such as grass and tree pollen. For our arms and hands, we have the gloves. It is protection for many different reasons, such as keep hands and fingernails clean and dry. Avoid blisters and calluses, prevent cuts and scrapes, or protect existing cuts and scrapes from infection. We have different kinds of gloves. Firstly, we have the leather gloves. This kind of glove offer good grip, spark resistance, and protection against sharp or abrasive surfaces. This material offers the best protection against thorns, branches, and other sharp plant parts, while pruning or trimming bushes, hedges, and trees. Secondly, we have the bamboo gloves. It is for daily weeding, pruning, and other garden chores. They wear like iron, and they are comfortable and form to your hand. The gloves are not stiff and unresponsive. Lastly, for our kinds of gloves, the cotton gloves. They are breathable and lightweight. They'll keep your hands clean while digging in the dirt and will protect against blisters while you uproot weeds. But they aren't waterproof and won't provide much protection against chemicals, cuts, and pokes. Another PPE that we can use for our arms and hand, we have the gardening sleeves. It protects arms from prickly plants and direct heat of the sun. Now, for our legs and feet, we have the gardening apron. It protects your clothing from dirt, fertilizers, and plant stains. It's also a way to safely carry tools such as pruning shears, hand forks, spades, seeds, cuttings, and harvest fruits, vegetables, and flowers. Lastly, we have the garden boots. Unlike shoes designed to be in the garden, where your feet can easily get soaked, garden boots provide a barrier between your skin and the potentially harmful chemicals being sprayed. Plus, they keep your feet dry as well. Now, let's go to the selection and checking of PPE for each garden work. PPE should be selected based primarily 
on the hazards identified during the assessment. Here are the other guides in selecting PPE. First is the fit and comfort. The user must be able to move freely while wearing the PPE. If the PPE does not fit properly, it can make the difference between being safely covered or dangerously exposed. It may not provide the level of protection desired. Next, we have the appropriateness. We must select PPE that is only necessary prior to the task. We must consider the working conditions and hazards present in the task given. Inappropriate selection of PPE may lead to delays and low work proficiency. Lastly, is free from wear and tear. It should be free from wear and tear and check PPE for damages. PPE condition also affects its ability to protect its user. Refrain from using PPEs that are damaged because it may lead to further injuries. Now, my dear students, let's see if you fully understand our lesson. Let's sum it up. First, what does PPE stands for? Very good. PPE stands for Personal Protective Equipment. Next is, can you enumerate the sample PPEs for each body part? Great job! We have for our head and face, the sun hat, the face shield. And for our nose and mouth, we have the garden mask. For our arms and hand, we have Number one, gloves. And number two, gardening sleeves. And for our legs and feet, we have gardening apron. And number two, the garden boots. And then, what are the guides in selecting and checking PPE for garden work? Good job! We have number one, fit and comfort. Number two, appropriateness. And number three, free from wear and tear. So always remember class, wearing personal protective equipment prepares us for any health and safety risks while working. We can safely and effectively finish our job because of the protection provided by our PPEs. We must also learn on how to select and check the proper PPE that is essential prior to our job. It will help us maximize our work proficiency and eliminate unnecessary expenses. And now that we are done with our lesson, my dear students, are you ready for a short quiz? Bring out a piece of paper or your test notebook. Choose the letter of the answer that best fits the situation. I will read the questions 
and the choices twice. Okay? Are you ready? Then let's start. First question. When working under the sun, what PPE should you wear to protect your head and face from ultraviolet rays? Letter A. Gloves. Letter B. Apron. Letter C. Sun hat. Or letter D. Garden boots. Again, when working under the sun, what PPE should you wear to protect your head and face from ultraviolet rays? Letter A. Gloves. Letter B. Apron. Letter C. Sun hat. Or letter D. Garden boots. Next question. While weeding the plant beds, what PPE could serve as your protection from pricking your fingers from thorny grasses? Letter A. Face shield. Letter B. Gardening sleeves. Letter C. Sun hat. Or letter D. Gloves. Again, while weeding the plant beds, what PPE could serve as your protection from pricking your fingers from thorny grasses? Letter A. Face shield. Letter B. Gardening sleeves. Letter C. Sun hat. Or letter D. Gloves. For our third question, we have scheduled to apply organic fertilizer on our garden. What PPE should you wear to prevent inhaling airborne particles that may cause allergies and respiratory problems? Letter A, gardening mask. Letter B, apron. Letter C, gardening sleeves. Or letter D, face shield. Again, we have scheduled to apply organic fertilizer on our garden. What PPE should you wear to prevent inhaling airborne particles that may cause allergies and respiratory problems? A. Gardening mask B. Apron C. Gardening sleeves or D. Face shield Number 4 question It just rained and you were asked to check the garden plants. What PPE is needed to protect your feet from getting soaked on muddy areas? A. Gloves B. Garden boots C. Gardening mask or D. Sun hat Again, it just rained and you were asked to check the garden plants. What PPE is needed to protect your feet from getting soaked on muddy areas? A. Gloves B. Garden boots C. Gardening mask or D. Sun hat Lastly, you were tasked to prune the shrubs and herbs from our garden. What PPE can protect your eyes and face from flying debris while doing the said job? A. Apron B. Gardening sleeves C. Face shield or D. Gloves Again, you were tasked to prune the shrubs and herbs from our garden. What PPE can protect your eyes and face from flying debris while doing the said job? Letter A. Apron B. Gardening sleeves C. Face shield or D. Gloves And now, let us check your answers. I hope you will get a perfect score. Let's see. Here is the list of the correct answers. For number 1, letter C, sun hat. Number 2, D, gloves. For number 3, letter A, gardening mask. 
For number 4, letter B, gardening boots. And for our last number, letter C, face shield. How many correct answers did you get? Did you get a perfect score? If so, great job! Before I officially end our lesson, I have here educational facts that I will share to you. Did you know that plants respond to sound? Plants really do respond to sound. Talking to plants to help them grow is a well-known old gardener's tale. But studies have shown vibration, like music, or perhaps even the sweet sound of your voice can affect plant growth. Plus, there was a study that compared to a silent greenhouse to one where they piped in a voiced soundtrack and found that plants in the latter grew more. So, the next time you plant or go to your garden, talk and sing to them, since it helps them grow. Here is another useful trivia. Did you know that you can grow plants without soil? You heard it right! Hydrophonics or hydrophonic gardening is a method of growing plants without soil. It's a way to nurture a huge variety of edible plants such as herbs, vegetables, and even some fruits to grow indoors all year round. Regardless of what Mother Nature is doing outside your door, a hydrophonic system doesn't take a lot of space. It will work just about anywhere, and plants will actually grow faster than if you were growing it in ground. In order to grow, plants need water, sunlight, carbon dioxide from air circulation, and nutrients. In a traditional garden, plant roots have to seek out nutrients in the soil. In hydrophonic gardens, nutrients are dissolved in the water that surrounds the roots, so plants have even easier access to the nutrition they need. The result? Plants tend to grow big and beautiful very quickly. And that ends our lesson for today. I hope that you learned something from our discussion. This is Project Shine, Aral Tarlac Henio, brought to you by Department of Education, Tarlac Province. In cooperation with Cable 100 and DZTC 828 Radio Pilipino, Tarlac. Thank you and always remember, in TLE, we have skills, knowledge, and progress. Again, this is Dexter John S. Ramilo of Estepona National High School, your teacher broadcaster in TLE, Agri-Fishery Arts, agri -crop Production, Grade 9. Saying, keep safe and God bless us all. Bye! Tuberculosis Gaano katagal ang gamutan ng TB? Ang tuberculosis treatment ay umaabot ng 6 hanggang 8 buwan na pag-inom ng gamot. Kapag naman ito ay naantala, maaaring umabot ng dalawang taon ang gamutan. Tandaan, ang TB ay hindi namamana, hindi nakukuha sa pagpapagod, pagpupuyat o pagkatuyo ng pawis sa likod. Hindi na ipapasa sa paghawak ng gamit ng taong may TB. Hindi nakukuha sa kagat ng lamok. Kaya kung may suspetsa, agad kumonsulta. Libre ito. Maging bahagi ng TB Free Pinas. Konsulta tayo sa ating mga primary care provider para sa Healthy Pilipinas. Paalala mula sa Department of Health. 
sa ngalan ng pag-ibig. Pangakong ikaw lang. Walang hindi gagawin. Walang hindi hahamakin. Paulit-ulit, araw-araw ikaw pa rin. rin. For richer, for poorer, in, in sickness, sickness and, and in health. health. Kung mahal mo sila, magpa-booster ka. Promise. Pexman. Ligtas para, para sa lahat. One, one, one FM. One FM. One yeah. This is your one. My only one. One lang yan. The only one. One. Lucena, 88.3, Legaspi, 96.1, Surigao, 95.9, Butuan, 92.1, Mindoro, 96.7, Tacloba, 99.3, Valen, 95.1, Puerto Princesa, Palawan. This is your one. Your only one. Your only one. 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 One FM. Nagbabalik ang inyong paaralang panghimpapawid Aral Tarlac Henyo Sa RTV Tarlac Channel 26 At sa bayang naririnig sa DZTZ 828 Radyo Pilipino Tarlac Ayaw rin ay napapanood sa FB Live ng RTV Tarlac Channel 26 Sumasahim papawid mula sa bayan ng Pura Tarlac Mula sa bayan ng San Clemente Mula rito sa Borok Elementary School, Pura Tarlac sa bayan ng Kapas Tarlac. Ako, ang inyong guro na maghahatid sa inyo ng makabuluhang pagtalakay sa ating karadim. listeners out there, especially to all grade 9 students, welcome to Aral Tardacanio here on RTV Tarlac Channel 26, simulcast over DCPC, Radio Filipino Tarlac. I am Cesar Rim Embergara, or you can call me Sir Rim, your teacher broadcaster for Health 9, and who will help you understand and aiming for a fruitful learning experience on our lesson today. So sit back, enjoy and relax, my dear grade 9 learners from all over the Tarlac province as we go over our 25 minutes discussion on the air. I just want to make some important reminders before listening to our broadcast. Make sure that you are in a quiet, relaxed, comfortable place 
and with the guidance of your parent or guardian when listening or watching. And of course, make sure that you have a copy of your module, learning activity sheet, or compendium to better understand our interesting lesson today. The third quarter lesson in Health 9, Quarter 3, Week 7, Day 3 in Broadcasting, Carrying and Transporting an Injured Person is a great help to one another. This module will be challenged to analyze situation and you can use your muscular endurance to transport and carry an injured person to a safer place. So grade 9 learners, are you all now ready to learn and participate on the 25 minutes discussion on air? I guess you are now ready to learn and participate. And but before we proceed to our topic, let me just check first if you still remember your previous lesson that you had with your teacher. And for me to check your responses, you can post your answers on our Facebook live streaming, post a message on our group chat, or you can PM me through my number, 0906-381-3785. And that way, I can check if you are with me on this broadcast. Again, you can PM me through my number 0906 381 In that way, I can check if you are with me on this broadcast. Last time, Teacher Abby discussed about first aid. And today, we will be having a short review about the lesson that you had with your teacher. And of course, first, I'm going to show you a short video clip connected to first aid. And of course, you will identify the parts of bandage and the different types of folding. Again, all you have to do grade 9 students is to watch it carefully. how to apply the basic parts of bandage and of course the different types of folding and of course this type of folding will be useful in such giving first aid to a person who got injured and of course i strongly believe that this type of folding will be useful in case of emergency and of course to better understand your previous topic discussed by teacher abby last time we will be having a short review uh, and of course, we will be having a short game entitled Name Me. I will give you the meaning and description as well as the picture. Then all you have to do is to identify its name after I counted 3, 2, 1, go. Okay? Again, you can post your answers on our Facebook live streaming, post a message on our group chat, or you can PM me through my numbers, 906 381 Three seven eight five, and of course, you can write your answers on your activity notebook in Mape Nine. Okay, let's start now our short game. Number one, it is a piece of a sterile cloth that covers a wound to prevent infection and stop bleeding. 
Great and students, okay, name me in 3, 2, 1, go. What do you think is the answer for this question? Okay, most of you answered dressing on our Facebook live streaming. Very good, grade 9 students. You've got the correct answer. Second, it is used to reduce swelling and relieve pain, especially used for sprains and strips. Okay, name me in 3, 2, 1, go. What do you think is the answer for this question, grade 9 students? Okay, someone texted me and he is Riley Lagrimas from Balayang National High School. He answered cold compress. Very good, Riley. You've got the correct answer. Moving on, these terms are used to apply pressure and to bleeding for covering wounds and burns and providing supports for immobilization for broken bones, sprains, and strains. Okay, name me. In three, two, one, go. What would be the answer for this question, grade 9 students? And as of the moment, you're posting again your answers on our Facebook live streaming. And I'm so happy with your active participation. And I really enjoying reading your answers, grade 9 students. And the answer given by Kaisel from Tarlac National High School is bandaging okay you've got the correct answer kaisel next in line we get this a collection of supplies and equipment that used to go to give medical treatment okay name me in three two one go so what would be the answer for this question grade nine students okay now let's let me check your answers on our group chat and as scrolling, you've answered first aid kit. You've got the correct answer for this question, grade 9 students. And lastly, it is a type of wound that caused by nails, needles, and other pointed objects. Okay, name me in 3, 2, 1, go. And the answer is... Okay, if your answer is puncture grade 9 students so from all over the Tarilac province, you've got the correct answer. And I'm so happy with your active participation grade 9 students. And I'm so glad that you still remember our previous lesson in Health 9. So this leads us to the continuation of our lesson for today's afternoon broadcast in Health 9, Quarter 3, Day 3 in Broadcasting which are the carrying and transporting an injured person. Let's start now our discussion. Transporting an injured person requires great help. And of course, as a first aider, you must undergo proper trainings. And again, as a first aider, you must consider the following factors in such giving first aid to a person who got ill. First, we have weight and height of the victim. Second, the status of the victim. Third is the environment. Then number four is the special need consideration. Moving on, we have here the three types of transporting an injured person that we will identify, namely, one man carry, two months carry, or three or more months carry. First in line is the one man carry. One man carry or transporting are used to move casualty when the time of the materials needed to make litter are not available and or the personnel are not available to assist you moving the casualty. Again, that is one man transporting. And one man carry or transporting has its own classification. First is fireman's carry. Fireman's carry are the easiest way to transport a light and smaller victim and a fireman's carry is a technique allowing one person to carry another person without assistance by placing the carried person across the shoulder of the carrier. And of course, here are the steps and images of fireman's carry. First, 
we need to raise the victim to standing position. This is no easy task since they're dead to the world, of course. Chip your way to your right leg and stick between the victim's legs. Grab the victim's right hand with your left and uh, drape it over to your shoulder. Then transport your victim to a safer place. Again, this is a part man carry. Second classification is piggyback carry. And piggyback carry is applied when the victim is conscious. And of course, here are the steps or the process and images of piggyback carry. First, stand up straight with your arms hanging loosely at your sides. Bend your knees slightly and have partner place their arms over your shoulder. Bend your knees slightly and have your partner place their arms over your shoulder. Then reach your straight back with your arms underneath your legs and slowly raise rider straightening your legs. Number four, make sure you support their upper body weight and keep your back straight as possible. Hold the big beam just behind the knees and once steady, walk at fast but stable pace. And that is piggyback carry. Third, one man carry is the pack strap carry. And pack strap carry is applied when the victim is smaller than the first aider. And here are the steps of pack strap carry and its image. First, place the victim's arms over your shoulder. Cross the victim's arms, grasping the victim's opposite waist. Pull the arms close to your chest. Squat slightly and drag your hips into victims while bending slightly at the waist. Then balance the load of your hips and support the victim with your legs. And of course, transport your victim to a safer place. Once more, that's pop strap carry. Next is the shoulder drag carry. And shoulder drag carry used when the floor is smooth and short distance transport. Here are the steps in shoulders drag carry and I'm going to show you the images. First, place the victim arms over their shoulder so that they end up facing the same direction as the victim. Second, uh, using their legs, they stand with the victim. Third, the rescuers then move out dragging the victim's legs behind. Then transport your victim to a safer place. Again, that is shoulder drag carry. After the shoulder drag carry, we have here the fireman's drag or tight hand scroll. Fireman's drag or tight hand scroll used when the first aider and the victim must scroll underneath structures. And here are the steps in fireman's drag or tight hand scroll. And of course, I'm going to show you the process or the image. First, cross to show the image. Kneel as tried the casualty and lead patient's arms over your head so his surveys are at the back of your neck. And when you crawl forward, base your shoulder high enough so that, so that the casualty will bump against the neck at the ground. Then transfer or transport your victim to the safer place. And lastly, we have the blanket drug carry. And blanket drug carry used when the victim is seriously injured and should not be lifted. Here are the steps of blanket drug carry. First, place the casualty in supine position on the blanket and pull the blanket along the floor to transfer your victim to a safer place. Second type of transporting is two-man carry or transporting. And two-man carry is a good method for carrying victims and, and victims up and down stairs or through narrow or uneven areas. Chair or seat carry is the best way to help an injured person. And chair or seat carry is applied when there are two first aiders and chair is available. So here are the steps in chair and seat. First, Position the casualty on his back. Second, bear the position themselves on opposite sides of the casualty's hips and knee. 
Each bearer passes one arm under the casual tea bag and, or, and the other arm under the casual tea style. The bearer grasps each other wrist securely. And both bearers rise in a unison lifting casual tea. Then both bearers move forward, carrying the casual tea to a safer place. The last type of transporting is three or more men's carry. It is categorized into two classifications. First, we have the hammock carry, and hammock carry is applied when there are three first aiders. So here are the steps of hammock carry. First, reach under the victim and grasp one wrist on the opposite rescuer. The rescuer on the ends will only be able to grasp one wrist on the opposite rescuer. The rescuers will only wrist grasp and will use their free hands to support the victim's head and feet or legs. Then the rescuers will then squat and lift the victim on the command of the person nearest the head and remembering to use proper lifting techniques. Then transport your victim to a safer place. And second of the three or more months carries the bearer alongside carry. Bearer alongside carry carries will stay on the injured side of the victim. Hammock carry and bear alongside carry has the same step in transporting a victim. And of course, to simplify, here are the steps of alongside carry. First, carrier will stay on the uninjured side of the victim. Then transport your victim into a safer place. That's it, grade 9 students. And to sum up our short discussion today, we have generally discussed the different types of carrying and transporting an injured person and of course we need to give them first aid and such thing and of course uh, we have generally discussed the different types and its classification of carrying and transporting an injured person again namely one month carry two or more months carry and three or more months carry and i hope you had a deeper understanding about our lesson today. Once again, uh, don't forget to watch us live on our Facebook from 8, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. in the afternoon from Monday to Friday for more radio-based radio lessons based on most essential learning competencies. And please do take time to like and share our Facebook page, RTV Torilac Channel 26. Okay, grade 9 students, let's see how much you learn about our discussion this afternoon this is only five item quiz again you can post your answers on our facebook live streaming or you can write your answer uh, on your mappy notebook in mappy 9 okay i'm going to show you or post you post to you the direction of our activity okay all you have to do is to identify each number and of course again post your answers on your on our facebook live streaming and in your map and notebook first we have this is the type of carrying used to move the casualty when the time of the materials needed to make a litter are not available and or other personnel are not available to assist you second it is the type of carrying used to the use when the floor is smooth and short distance transport number three this type of carrying used when the floor or it is a type of carrying to transporting applied when there are more there are three or more first either to assist the casualty then it is the time of the carrying an injured person applied when there are two first either and chairs again this is only five item quiz and it's posted on our facebook live streaming okay again i'll give you five seconds to finalize your answer grade 9 students okay let's check your answers grade 9 learners first we have fireman scary number two piggyback carry number three shoulder drag carry number four three or more man scary or transporting the number five chair or seat carry i hope you had a deeper understanding about our lesson today grade nine students and of course 
for those who are holding their last or learning activity sheet, uh, you can now accomplish our activity one and two entitled Campaign for Safety and Concept Map. And of course, if you have things to clarify or queries, you can always reach your teachers through their emails or their social media accounts and rest assured that we will be glad to answer all your queries. Okay? I hope you had enjoyed our third day broadcast in Health 9, quarter 3. And of course, you had a deeper understanding about our lesson today. So, grade 9 learners, once again, this has been your teacher broadcaster saying goodbye. God bless. Stay home. Stay safe. And keep on helping others. Ba, na ang Pilipinas ay mayroong 7,641 islands mula sa bilang na 7,107 islands na dagdagan ito ng 534 na isla noong 2017. Tanging 2,000 lamang sa mga islang ito ang natitirhan. Lam yun na! Yan ang mga isla sa Pilipinas! Bahagi mo Radio Pilipino Sa Sa Saan mang bahagi ng Pilipinas Sa Sa Saan mang bahagi ng mundo A -a Ano mang uri ng pamumuhay Ito ang Kabahagi mo Radio Pilipino Napapakinggan on air On air And online Online Sa buong mundo Sa pamamagitan ng www.radiopilipino.com Radiopilipino.com e Impormasyong may kalidad At serbisyong may halaga Kasama Katuwa, Kapino, Kabahagi mo, Kabahagi mo, Radio Pilipino, Radio Pilipino. Kinurunahan na bilang binibining kanlahi 2023 si Miss Conception Vera Corinne Dickinson. Bagamat masama ang pakiramdam, hindi pa rin napigilan si Vera na masungkit ang corona. Binahagi ni Vera ang kanyang mga plano pagkatapos ng pageant. I think it's a great platform to actually promote for our tourism as well as the ag agritourism in our municipality. But right now I have bigger obligations to fulfill and that is to represent actually Tarlac Province. Nagbigay rin ng mensahe si Vera para sa mga kabataang Tarlacenyo. As an advocate for education, sana priority natin yung education lagi. And as for the binibining kanlahi naman, sana makiselebrate tayo together, all together with the whole Tarlac province. Masayang masaya rin ang ina ni Vera at ang kanyang mga taga-suporta sa kanyang nakamit na tagumpay. We did not expect this. Uh, I always tell her na... Sa pageantry, laging bilog yung mundo. So, if you lost yung, uh, yung competition, don't feel bad. It doesn't mean you're not beautiful. It means it's not your time, pero napatunayan na naman niya. Since ito yung passion niya talaga, binigay niya yung best niya. And I'm really happy for her. Very, very proud, of course. Talaga namang yung gusto niyang yan, full support naman ako. And everybody knows here, they're all witness na every time meron silang activities, Actually, I'm her driver <laughs> and supporter. <laughs> Actually, expect ko talaga sa ang mananalo. <laughs> uh, andito lagi kami para sa kanya, para suportahan siya. Salamat, uh, Tarlakenyo.
I'm very proud of you kasi po nakita po talaga naming lahat yung sakripisyo ni Vera for this pageant. Talagang conflict sa schedule niya. May mga bagay siyang binitawan para lang makuha po yung crown na to. Nagsakripisyo po talaga siya and she very well deserves this crown. Present rin sa pageant si Miss Earth Philippines Jenny Ramp at si Miss Bikini Philippines Zaya Nestle Pala. Angat rin ang ganda ni Binibining Kanlahi 2022 Jasmine Omay sa kanyang final walk. Binahagi nito ang kanyang mga plano ngayong naipasa na nito ang kanyang corona. I guess um, we're preparing for something and we don't want to be half-baked pag lumaban. So we just doing our best and gathering and you know maximizing the months that we have. So yun soon. We'll see. We'll be back at the national stage. Bukod kay Vera Dickinson, kinaronahan din bilang first runner-up si Binibining Kapas, Janice Sikat, second runner-up naman si Binibining Victoria, Mary Joy Cabusao, third runner-up si Binibining Bamban, Crisia Ia Santos, at fourth runner-up naman si Binibining Tarlac City, Perli Biala. Hindi man naiuwi ng ibang munisipalidad ang corona, isang malaking karangalan pa rin ang maging kinatawan ng mga bayan sa Tarlac. Dahil ang gandang Tarlacenya, tunay na nakakahalina. Para sa RTV Tarlac Channel 26, ako si Lovell Mikin, nagbabalita. Alam niyo ba na ang gitnang Luzon ay tinaguri ang banga ng bigas ng bayan at kamalig ng palay ng Pilipinas dahil dito nagbumula ang malaking produksyon ng bigas sa ating bansa. Ito ay binubuo ng mga lalawigan ng Aurora, Pataan, Pampanga, Nueva Ecija, Zambales at Tarlac. Pagalihin natin manood ng Araw Tarlac Henyo, lunes hanggang biyernes, alas 8.30 ng umaga hanggang alas 5.30 ng hapon. Ako si Binibining Pia Isrin Kapiral, ang inyong teacher broadcaster sa Araling Panlipunan dito sa Project Shine Araw Tarlac Henyo. Lagi nating tandaan ang pag-aaral ng Araling Panlipunan ay tungo sa daan ng pagiging makajos. Makakalikasan, makatao at makabansa. Nagsubaybay ng ating Project Shine RL Terlakenyo dito sa RTV Terlak Channel 26 at sabay na papakinggan sa DZT, DZTZ Radio Filipino 828 FM Radio at napapanood via Converge TV Channel 100 at FB Live ng RTV Terlak at ng Dep Entire Terlak Province. Ako po ang inyong segment host, uh, Mr. Kevin Chasar Pura, ang AP leader ng Aranguren Integrated School High School Department. Ngayong hapon ay mapalad tayo dahil sasamahan tayo ang um, isa sa napakahusay nating kasamahan sa Araling Panlipunan. Ang Master Teacher 1 ng San Pedro High School, walang iba kundi si Ma'am May R. Tolentino. Magandang hapon, Ma'am May. Magandang hapon, sir. Kasama din po natin bilang panelist ang Teacher 3 at isang kasalo enthusiast mula sa Poroc Elementary School, Sir Christian Gino E. Bayas. hapon, Sir Gino. Good afternoon, Sir Chas and Mami. Muli, welcome po sa ating Project Shine RL Tarlacenyo dito sa Division Virtual Casalo sa Radyo. Bago po tayo magsimula sa ating uh, paksa ngayong hapon, batiin muna natin ang ating mga tagapanood. Magsimula tayo sa iyo, Mami. Naimbag naman lang, 
Magandang hapon sa lahat ng sumusubaybay sa ating Project Shine, Aral Tarlacenyo, Kasalo sa Radyo. Naway na sa mabuti tayong kalagayan and always be safe, lalo na sa banta ng COVID-19 virus. Inaanyayahan namin kayong lahat na tumutok mula umpisa hanggang sa dulo ng pagtalakay sa panibagong kaalaman sa ating kasaysayang lokal ng Tarla na kung saan nakasentro ito sa Ili Tipura o Bayan ng Pura. And tinitake ko rin itong opportunity na to para batiin ang mga kasamahan ko mula sa San Pedro National High School sa pamumuno at panguna ng aming principal na si Madam Marilyn I. Antalan sa aming head teacher na si Sir Chris Darwin T. De La Cruz and sa aming OICHT sa Araling Panlipunan na si Madam Nariza R. Marquez. Maraming salamat po, Ma'am May Dolentino. Ngayon naman, Sir Gino, meron ka po bang gustong batiyan? Ayan. Um, magandang hapon din po sa ating lahat, lalong-lalo na sa mga nanonood at nakikinig sa ating FB Live sa Kasalo sa Radyo at ganun din po sa mga kasamahan kong guro mula dito sa Bayan ng Pura. Alright, maraming salamat Sir Gino. So, <clears throat> tatala kayo ng pag-uusapan po natin ngayong hapon ay ang kasaysayan ng Bayan ng Pura. Ang Bayan ng Pura ay unang nakilala bilang bahagi ng Bayan ng Herona. Nasa bahagi ito at binubuo ng dalawang sityo ng San Mateo at San Isidro. Ngayong hapon, tatala kayo natin kung paano ba naging bayan ang Pura. Sisimulan natin yan sa pag-alam kung sino-sino nga ba ang mga unang naninirahan sa puok ng Pura, Ma'am May. Maraming salamat, Sir Chester. Ang mga nanirahan sa pook ng Pura ay nagmula sa mga kilala at makapangyarihang angkan mula sa Pangasinan at Ilocos, na kung saan nagtayo sila ng mga dampang nipa, kung saan maaari silang magpahinga at pansamantalang manirahan habang sila ay nangangaso ng mga hayop sa gubat. Nang lumaon, ang mga dampang ito ay dumami hanggang sa maging ganap na baryo na mas kilala sa tawag na Barrio de Villa ng mga Kastila na nagdaraan patungo sa lalawigan ng Nueva Ecija. Ang de Villa ay isang salitang Kastila na ang ibig sabihin ay pamayanan. Alam natin na ang mga taga Ilocos Norte, Ilocos Sur, even also sa La Union at Pangasinan, they abandoned their place of birth because it consisted of narrow coastal plains and highlands where agriculture is not a promising means of livelihood. So nakita nila na habang sa kanilang paglalakbay, nakita nila na ang bayan na to or ang lugar na ito ay in ay sapat or suitable para pa, para may ma-cultivate sila na lupa. Kasi 'di ba kung titignan natin yung world history natin, yung mga sinuunang kabiasdan, usually ay sumisibol yan it's either sa mga ilog o kaya naman sa mga matatabang mga lupain dahil nakikita nila yung potential na magkakaroon sila ng food security. And so nagsiset Nag, nag-establish sila ng kanilang settlement. So, ganun din yung nangyari sa bayan ng Pura. Alright. Maraming salamat, Mami. Ganun pala yung naging kwento ng, unang, ng mga taong unang nanirahan sa Pura. Pero, paano naman naging bayan ang munting pueblo noon ng Pura, Sir Gino? Ayan. Thank you, Sir Chas. So, sa patuloy na paglikas at pagdami ng populasyon, ito ay naging isang maunlad na pamayanan. Hanggang sa ang mga mamamayan nito, ay nagharap ng isang kahilingan sa mga may kapangyarihan upang ang kanilang baryo ay maging isang ganap na nagsasariling bayan. Noong ikalabing walo ng Nobyembre, isang libo walong raan pitumput dalawa, naghain ng petisyon ang mga mamamayan na maging isang pueblo ito. Tinawag na pura ang naturang pueblo dahil lahat ng mga mamamayan ay purong Ilocano. Ang ideya ng pagbibigay ng pangalang pura ay mula kay Padre Graneta na noon at kura paroko ng Herona, ang inang bayan ng Pura. Naging isang ganap na sa nagsasariling bayan ng Pook ng Pura sa pamamagitan ng bisa ng isang dektrito superior ng pamahalaang Kastila noong ikaapat ng Pebrero 1877. 
All right, Sir Gino. Gino pala yung kasi isaya. Yes. All right. Sir Chas, Sir, gusto ko lang magbigay din ng additional information regarding dun sa binigay ni Sir Gino. Puro's recognition and political status as a town did not last long. As for unknown cause, the town was reverted into its original status as a barrio in 1903, again under the political jurisdiction of the municipality of Herona. Five years later, or in 1908, Puras Township status was re-established with the late Don Felix Meligrito as its chief executive or president. So, yun po, Sir Chaster. Yes, maraming salamat, Mami, sa karagdagang impormasyon. At Sir Gino, na ganoon pala ang kasaysayan kung bakit naging bayan ang pura. Ngayon naman, uh, saan nga ba makikita ang pura at ano-ano yung mga uh, makikita at malapit na mga <clears throat> probinsya dito at maging ano yung mga barangay na bumubuo sa pura, Mami? Ang bayan ng pura ay matatagpuan sa may dakong silangang bahagi ng lalawigan ng Tarlac. Ito ay nasa dulo ng hangganan 